Welcome to Salisbury, North Carolina's Local Foods, Local Places Workshop. This is September 16th recording of the LFLP Workshop. Local Foods, Local Places is an EPA program supported by USDA and its federal partners. Great. So this is Christine Gobey with Dialogue and Design. Glad folks are joining. If you're in a location that has background information, we welcome you to mute yourself and uh, we'll do a run through of all the information when we get started. Um, so welcome as you're joining, who has joined the call so far? Carol, welcome. Thank you. Tell us Carol, yeah, you're with Bread Riot. Great. Carol, I don't know if you're answering the phone, but how long has Bread Riot been in existence? It, you know, I've looked at the Facebook page and we've spoken with Dottie, but actually haven't heard a whole lot about the history of Bread Riot yet. Uh, Bread Riot's been around for about um, 12 years, I believe. Okay. I've been with Bread Riot for about six and a half, I think. Okay. So, um, and it was uh, named after um, the Bread Riot that happened here in, um, during the Civil War when there was a, a flower, or the, the price of flour was so high. Mm -hmm. The women marched on downtown Salisbury and demanded lower prices. Uh -huh. So um, that's kind of a little history of how we got our name, but we're just mostly fake, uh, focused on um, uh, promoting local farms and um, educating people about the importance of eating local mm -hmm. um, as far as footprint goes and helping the economy. So great. That's yeah, wonderful to hear. And how large is Bread Riot now? Um, how large? Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if, if you would put a, um, a size on it. We have about seven or eight board members. Um, but um, we, this, one of our programs is um, we pass out produce during the summer. Mm -hmm. And this summer we um, got grants from United Way. So we bought um, about $8,000 worth of produce from our local farmers and distributed it in the community. So um, um, I don't That's have the exact numbers yeah. on my, um, but a lot, a lot of tomatoes. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. And are you helping folks determine how to cook and prepare foods as well? Or is it more just handing out the produce? How is that, that um, transition? How well, that at work? the beginning of the summer, um, we offered recipes, basic cooking recipes. Um, we, when we pass out produce, we usually stick to the basics. Um, tomatoes, cucumbers, zucchini, squash, corn, cantaloupes, melons. Um, we did do a, um, a program in February where we went to the local Head Starts and um, uh, gave them a couple recipes and, and kind of taught them. It was like a little cooking lesson and mm -hmm. with um, produce from local farms. And then we gave them a box of all the ingredients they needed to prepare the dishes. That's, that's great. So. And are people welcome, folks, as you're joining. We're just hearing a little bit about Bread Riot. Glad you're on. We'll get started in just a little bit. Are people able to receive box of produce week after week, or is it kind of a one-time um, event? In um, February, when we did the Head Start, we did three different Head Starts, and we uh, visited the East Rowan one. Um, yeah, I guess East Spencer one twice. So they were able to get a couple different bags. And... Um, when we pass out local produce, we go to the same sites um, over and over and over again so we can develop a relationship with the people. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, been, it's been great. That's really great to hear about. I know that there's been such an increase in demand in you know, different food access programs across the board that it's really exciting to hear about different programs that find different ways to connect people with food, yes. especially with how to, how to receive it. And going into the growing month or the winter months, will the program continue? Um, we do uh, share the harvest around Christmas where we distribute um, 
about 15 boxes of local produce to um, two different schools to, mm -hmm. and the communities and school rep picks the families that receive that. And as um, things come up, we do, but not so much in the winter because there's not a lot of farmers mm -hmm. here in Rowan County that produce all winter long. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So yeah. um, we do sense. a CSA in the winter, but that's a paid subscription. Mm -hmm. And um, we have, last year we had about 25 customers that we, um, they signed up for the CSA and we, they got a box every other week with not just local produce, but um, eggs and bread and things like that from local producers. And are you aggregating the produce from different folks and then distributing it out? Or are you, rep does Bread Riot work with a certain number of farmers? Uh, we try to work with all the farmers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so just kind of rotate it so that everybody gets a little piece of the pie. Mm -hmm. So, um, and we did a um, pack the pantry um, program where if any farmer had um, extra that they were unable to um, distribute because of COVID, you know, as far as um, some of our farmers sell to a lot of restaurants or wholesale hubs. Um, we bought it and just donated it to um, Rowan Health Ministries or some of the other food mm -hmm. pantries in the area. Mm -hmm. Great. That's so. great to hear about Bread Riot. Thanks, Carol, for letting us know more. Welcome, folks, as you're joining to the Local Foods, Local Places workshop. We're so glad to see all of you on this Wednesday at 3 p.m. It's just past the midpoint in the week, so the best part of your, your week is hopefully coming up the rest of today and tomorrow afternoon. This is Christine. We'll give folks just a few more minutes to join before we do an official welcome with the program. Are there any other um, cool programs folks want to let us know about before we officially get started? Any other programs that make you really excited in Salisbury? Hannah, that grant, I'm sure most people may know about it, but do you want to mention that grant? It's pretty exciting. Sure. Um, city applied for and uh, was awarded, I guess, two weeks ago now, the Paul Brune Historic Revitalization Incentive Grant um, in the amount of $543,000. Um, this will enable the city to create a sub-grant program so we can um, give money out to folks who are working on rehabbing buildings in downtown Salisbury. Um, we are still very early in the process of understanding um, the program guidelines and developing our own subgrant guidelines, but it's great because we're going to be able to continue to um, support uh, private investment um, ongoing in downtown, which is really cool. Yeah, great. Awesome. Thanks, Hannah. Um, it's a, that's just a really substantial grant and really exciting. So it's been fun to hear about that. It's fun. It's really fun to get, um, money that is like construction money. <laughs> for, you can uh, re-grant. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so unusual and really, really huge. So yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Great. So Darlene and Nick, what do you think? Should we get rolling? We have 19 folks who joined. Give it just a uh, few more minutes. Sure. Maybe two more minutes. That know. sounds great. All right, Nick, what are you excited about today? I'm, I'm excited that uh, the roster of people that signed up, that was, um, you know, yeah. it's a bit quite honest when you're trying to put together a community uh, meeting and trying to get people to show up without uh, supplying food and we're doing this virtually, two <laughs> knocks against us and people are showing up. <laughs> we planned to, we plan to uh, feed people initially, but now yeah. we can't. Um, yeah. But uh, I know James was going to help us out with that over at TDA and get some good food in. And uh, unfortunately, we got derailed. But I think I'm oh, very <laughs> Oh, we have two So good there. I hear welcome, folks, as you're joining. We're so glad all of you are on. We're going to do an official welcome in just a moment. If you happen to be in a place where there's background noise, we invite you to go ahead and mute yourself. And we'll do a full Zoom run through in just a minute here. Um, Will, how about you? What are you excited about today? I'm excited about working with everybody. My uh, mother-in-law went to Catawba, uh, and we went up down there just a few weeks ago, and it's it's a great place. I loved it, and um, just really look forward to 
to working with you all and seeing about getting some actions done on paper. Yeah, great. Awesome. Well, with that, I think, um, Darlene, we'll see what you're excited about. Then we'll turn it to Nick to welcome people and then back to you, Darlene, to, uh, to do our official welcome. Well, I'm excited to actually finally be here at this moment because it's been a while since uh, reviewing applications and selecting communities and planning for this event. So I'm excited to just be in this space and to be with this great group of people. Yeah, awesome, Darlene, thanks. All right, Nick, with that, we're gonna turn it over to you for kind of our official kickoff and welcome, knowing that we'll hear more from you and the steering committee in just a little bit. So Nick, over to you. Mute, okay. I just wanted to, uh, again, welcome everybody. I'm excited to see uh, all the names and faces. Um, it's definitely a busy schedule. We wanted to try to do this in the late afternoon and at night as much as we could to uh, kind of give everybody, as many people as an opportunity as possible. Um, I know we're gonna introduce the steering committee members and kind of what our timeline and process has been um, through this uh, past couple of months. Uh, but I just wanna take this quick second just to thank them. Um, enduring, you know, we've had a little bit of changes uh, here and there and committee members just because of uh, various uh, scheduling and, um, but just for them to hang on to, I mean, we could talk COVID ad nauseum, but um, just for them to hang in and, and be a, a part of this, uh, I really appreciate all of them uh, sending feedback, et cetera. So again, welcome everybody. It's gonna be good. Um, Christine and her team has been great. Darlene, everybody. Um, so let's get it going. Awesome, thanks Nick for that great kickoff. All right, Darlene, over to you to welcome people. Hi, everybody. My name is Darlene Bird, and I'm with the Office of Community Revitalization and the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, and I am in Washington, D.C., and I would like to welcome you as a host, uh, along with the USDA, as part of this program. I just congratulate you for being selected as one of 16 communities to receive this technical assistance. So we're excited to be with you tonight. I'm not gonna take up much time here because I'll have more to say a little bit later, but I wanted to welcome you and congratulate you. I wish we were there live under the tent. We have perfect weather right now, so it's not too hot, but this is a second best just to be there. So I look forward to spending the next um, couple of, next few hours with you and days. Great, thanks Darlene. Will, do you wanna introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, my name is Will Cockrell. I'm with EPRPC here in Charlottesville, Virginia. And we've, uh, I've been on all the steering committee calls and uh, talking to everyone who's been involved with this process. And as I mentioned, drove down there with my daughter and, uh, and checked out the, the, the city and um, just really looking forward to it. As Darlene said, it's, it's great seeing from beginning to getting to this, this point now with the work session. It's great to see the ideas already um, really budding and starting to cultivate, so. Yeah, great, thanks Will. My name is Christine Gauvet with Dialogue, Dialogue and Design and I'm part of the technical assistance team. I'm based in Central Virginia. I went to college in Western North Carolina for a while and grew up in West Virginia. So you'll see some case studies from West Virginia in just a little bit because it's awesome. Really glad that all of you are on um, the Zoom call today. We'll do introductions in just a few moments but want to orient folks to a few things. Um, so can everyone see my screen okay? Mm -hmm. Can folks now see? Okay, great. Um, so Zoom offers many possibilities and sometimes challenges. So if you have any problems at any point, let us know. There's a chat role. And then depending on how you're joining, at the bottom of your window, you'll see several different buttons, including chat. So if you click on chat, a new window will likely pop up. And you can put any technical questions or concerns that you have in there to us. So we welcome anything at any point. Um, with you know, the disadvantage of not being in person, we do have the advantage of actually being able to engage more folks because you know, you're in your homes, you're in the comfort of your own homes. And many of you also might have 
kids around or dogs or lizards or cats and all of that is welcome. If you have kids who run into your space or behind you, that's completely fine. At our evening session later, if you actually want to, you know, bring the family with you and mute yourselves, then that's welcome as well. We recognize that's just the reality that many people are in with COVID and we very much welcome that. So, um, we do have the ability to mute you. So if you find yourself muted and you did not mute yourself, you can always unmute yourself. So no problem there if you're, if you're kind of wondering. So think about your space. Think about where you're gonna be most comfortable during the workshop. You could be sitting, you can be standing or some combination of both, but sometimes you know, just a quiet place will really help you be able to focus and concentrate. Um, we do recommend sharing your video if possible to mimic that in-person engagement. We're going to keep things rolling. We have worked to keep this um, as um, productive a time session as possible, but we will keep things going. In order to help facilitate that in person, it's nice to see people's faces if possible. So if you're in a place where you can leave your video on, that's great. And if not, if you need to turn your video off, that's no problem. Um, if you're not speaking, we do invite you to stay muted and then just to unmute yourself. Again, the mute button is in the bottom of your screen. And if you happen to have low bandwidth, a lot of us, you know, there's a lot of connectivity issues for a lot of folks these days. If you actually turn off your video, it will free up bandwidth. If you're on a computer or device, if you actually hover over your image, three buttons will pop up on the upper right hand corner. You can also access a lot of controls there. Mute, unmute stop your video. You can actually rename yourself. We'll be using that a little bit later. And there's also a place where you can see participants. So if you click on the participant button, you can see a thumbs up icon. It's also on the screen here and a thumbs down. If you think this is no fun at all, I mean, you can give us a thumbs down. We don't like it. No, I'm just kidding. It's fine to use the thumbs down. Thumbs up, thumbs down, go faster, go slower. You can raise your hand. We'll also just be welcoming feedback as we move forward. We will be using the chat quite a bit in a few different ways as we move forward over the course of these four different sessions. So if you hear us say, please put your ideas in the chat roll, that's where you access it via the chat. Our meeting guidelines, please don't be shy. We welcome your ideas. But please do be courteous. If you see me go like this, it just means wrap it up. We have a lot of other folks we want to hear from, so please don't take it personally. It just means we want to keep rolling there. Um, again, use chat for sharing ideas. You can always raise your hand. And just step away as you need to and then come back. The sessions do build on each other. So we have four sessions and each one is <coughs> sequential. However, if you miss a session, there's no problem because we will catch you up at the beginning of the next one and you'll be able to jump right back in. So it's no problem if you need to miss a session and come back, um, that's completely fine. We do find that most people end up wanting to attend most of the sessions. Um, so just, you know, we, we welcome you the, the entire time that you're here. We will keep an eye again on the chat roll. If anybody has any problems, then, um, you can let us know. We can always hop on the phone with you as well. So in just a moment, again, we'll do introductions. Here's where we're headed over our four sessions. So we will have an hour break. So we'll, our first session is now, our opening meeting, vision, values, and case studies. We have an hour break. And then we'll go into some of the, the rubber hits the road around initial goals and action brainstorming. And we'll actually do some prioritization of initial goals at the end of session two this evening. So bring your, not your coffee maybe, bring your tea with you this evening, you know, bring your ice cream, we welcome that. Um, it's great if you can share recipes for really good banana splits. Tomorrow we start at 3 p.m. again, action brainstorming and prioritization. That's where it gets really fun and we start to think about how to make these ideas a reality in Salisbury. And then session four is from six to eight tomorrow around action detailing the next steps. Really key session. And that's where you might think about, well, who do we really need to help make this goal a reality? And if they aren't signed up, then you might call or text or email and say, hey, you need to be here because this is really a key opportunity for the future of Salisbury. So we welcome you to do that. And you can even forward people the information as well. Darlene, Will, anything else you wanna add before we move into introductions? <clears throat> Alrighty, so we're going to start out with our um, steering committee first. Um, I'm going to jump ahead two slides and then go back. I'm going to invite our steering committee to share um, your and 
for our steering committee to actually be the model of this because we have a big group in a short amount of time. So everybody has about 30 seconds. So that's really this name, affiliation and a phrase. So no long sentences, even the long sentences are cool. We hope that you connect with people and continue those conversations through today and moving forward. So your name, affiliation and in one to three words, what are you most excited about this technical assistance opportunity in this workshop? And I'll do a roll call based on the agenda and who's here, um, but again, we'll start with our steering committee. So with that being said, going back, um, Nick, do you wanna introduce the steering committee and get us kicked off? And then I'll just call the names one by one. Okay, uh, do you want me to introduce the whole committee or I can, uh, do you want them to introduce, introduce themselves? them to introduce themselves, but if you'll just introduce the idea of the steering committee and yourself, then we'll go into the steering committee members one by one. Okay. Uh, well, just the idea of the steering committee was just, um, you know, a group of uh, community members with, who were either just citizens with interest um, or people with or in organizations um, that we, um, you know, decided to reach out to, and some are originally actually approached the city and we'll get into some of that later um, and to talk about some, uh, some opportunities. But, um, but uh, so yeah, so uh, this committee is just made up of a wide array of uh, people in the healthy foods or foods or, um, uh, sorry, I was reading a note, but um, so yeah, so again, I welcome them all here and uh, again, let's get it going. Great, awesome, thanks Nick. So Nick, for you, your name, affiliation, and in a phrase, what are you most excited about today? Um, I look forward, uh, my name is Nick Aceves um, with the Salisbury Parks and Rec Department. And uh, I think uh, in a couple words, just uh, continued um, unification of uh, ideas and programs. Okay, great, thanks Nick. And Will has put his cell phone number in the chat roll. If anybody has any IT issues, you're welcome to contact him. We will get folks who are joining by phone only too. Again, as you hear introductions, one of the main uh, outcomes in addition to an action plan is to make connections with each other. So if you hear of somebody that you want to connect with, we invite you to drop their name down, send them a chat and, uh, you know, make that connection because that's one of the opportunities. So Latoya, on to you. Good afternoon. Uh, Latoya Price, uh, Interim Downtown Director. And I am definitely excited to be here today. We finally made it so we can all see the light. Um, but just excited to see um, and hear um, everybody's views, their goals and expectations, and um, anything to help the downtown to grow, I'm all for it. So I definitely look forward to this. And as Nick said, the unification of programs and activities. Great. Awesome. Thanks, Latoya. Dottie, on to you. Hi, I'm the president, as most of you know, of the Bread Riot group here. Bread Riot is an art, a volunteer organization where we work to get food from our local farmers to people. And we work with Farmers Market. We do um, a winter CSA box. We do a lot of distribution of uh, food to uh, low-income people during the summer. Uh, I do a fair amount of grant writing and and get enough money to make some of that happen. Thank you, Dottie. All right, let's go on to Michael. Is Michael on? Yes, Michael. Uh, hello, I'm Michael Fine. I work with the North Carolina Cooperative Extension Center. <coughs> so um, Cooperative Extension is a partnership between the university and the county. And I work with local growers and try to disseminate the uh, information that we research on a university level. And I'm most excited about seeing farmers uh, take up some of those practices and they've expressed to me that they would like to have the local food scene strengthened in order to um, facilitate that market with their produce. Great, thanks Michael, awesome. Brian. Hi, Brian Wimes, a uh, local attorney here in Salisbury, a uh, faithful customer of the farmer's market and serve on the board there. Um, I'd say I'm most excited about the collaborative nature of this so far. Uh, we have a very diverse set of uh, people with diverse set of experiences, um, and I look forward to moving our community forward with local food being a big part of that. Um, thanks, Brian. Glad you're on. 
All right, Alyssa. Harris, are you on? Alyssa on? <coughs> All right, is James on? James Meacham? All right, Hannah. Hi hey everyone, I'm Hannah Jacobson, I'm Planning Director for the City of Salisbury, been here for about 18 months. Um, I am excited about a lot of things, um, but I would be very excited if this uh, initiative resulted in some farm to table restaurants. Great, thanks Hannah. So desire, I see some heads nodding there. Awesome, thanks Hannah. Is Mike Miller on? No. All right, and Dave Corral, is David Corral on? No. All righty. Well, let's, I'm going to go with the participant list, um, and Carol, we'll go with you next. Okay. Hi, I'm Carol um, Corkin, Schmitz Corkin. I'm part of Bread Riot, and I'm also part of the Rowan Food and Farm Network, and I'm excited about the possibilities that we're going to discuss this week. Great. Awesome. Thanks, Carol. All right. Who is Smith A? Who is, uh, has joined us? Amy Smith. Smith. Amy, great. And go ahead and introduce hey. yourself. Yes, um, I, uh, my name is Amy Smith. I'm a health education specialist with Rowan County Public Health. And I also serve as a liaison with our farmer's market and currently serving as um, helping with the feeding coordination program uh, during COVID here with the county. And um, I'm going to give four words uh, of what I'm excited about, just local foods and promoting those and just uh, making sure that we have food security in our county. Great. Awesome. Thanks, Amy. All right, Alyssa Nelson. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Alyssa Nelson. I work in the planning department for the city of Salisbury. Um, mostly on design projects and I am super excited for this because I live in Salisbury. I frequent the farmers market and mostly excited for the uh, potential growth and I would have to second my boss Hannah on the farmers market or the farm to table. So awesome. happy to be here. Great. Thanks, Alyssa. Probably connected to the farmer's market there. So you got both of them in. That was awesome. Thanks, Alyssa. All right, Andre, am I saying that correctly? Uh, yes, Andre Neighbors. Great. Hey, Andre, you want to introduce yourself? Hey, sure. Hey, so I'm Andre Neighbors. I'm a um, party relations manager with uh, Visit North Carolina, our state tourism office. Um, so happy to be here. And I'll be in and out because I do have another meeting, but I'll, I'll be in, in and out and okay. travel. Glad you're on. We'll catch you up. And folks, if you have questions at any point, feel free to just pop it in the chat roll um, or just let us know. You know <laughs> if you're not sure what's happening, just again, let us know at any point. All right, Andrew. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Andrew Riddle. I am a Brownfields Project <laughs> Officer with the US EPA. And <laughs> I am just excited to be here with you all for, the, for these two days and to share ideas and, and listen to what all you guys have planned. Great, welcome. All right, um, I see the last name maybe, Belfano. I mute myself. Hi, this is Barbara Alfano, um, and I'm also from EPA Region 4, and uh, I work with Rafaela. Rafaela is um, currently on one of the other local foods, local places um, community calls. So she couldn't be on right now. So she'll be on later uh, for the workshop tonight. Um, so, uh, and plus I just, I was interested. I was on like the first call. So um, it's, it's nice to kind of rejoin and see what's going on. And uh, so my thing is sustainability uh, at EPA. So yeah. Great. Welcome, glad you're on. Hi, Cindy. Thanks. Yeah. Hi, I'm Cindy Fink with Meals on Wheels. <clears throat> and I'm most excited about local food and seniors and the availability of that local food for seniors. Glad you're on, Cindy. All right, Happy Roots Ashley. What a great combination of words and names. <laughs> Hey everybody, uh, my name's Ashley Hondarrier. I'm executive director of the local nonprofit in Salisbury called Happy Roots. Um, we assist and manage uh, local school and community gardens. 
work with preschool to seniors and uh, also encourage environmental stewardship. And I'm excited about uh, meeting like minds in our area. And I know a bunch of people on here, but um, see some new names and faces. And I'm excited to collaborate and just grow these local food operations. Awesome. Glad you're on. And that's a good point. Actually, we did put this <laughs> that hefty welcome packet. If anybody doesn't want to have their contact information shared with other participants, please let us know. You can just hit reply to that email and we'll take you off. But otherwise, we will be sharing a contact list with what you registered. So um, just let us know if you don't want that information to be shared. And again, if anyone's just joined, we'll do intros in just a moment. If you're in a place with background noise, if you can mute yourself, that's super helpful. So thank you. All right, Hillary Sherman, have you gone? No, I think so. I haven't gone yet. Um, okay, Hillary, great. Christine, um, I'm, I'm with the Economic Development Administration. I'm Hillary Sherman. I'm out of the Region 4 out of Atlanta. Um, and I'm super excited to participate today. EDA works uh, with uh, all 100 counties across the state. And we've had a really strong presence in the region. We funded Rowan Caravas Community College recently. Um, we work with Piedmont Triad Regional Council and Central Carolina Regional Council um, have been really interested in how do we provide capital uh, to small entrepreneurs um, and making sure that, that, that the available resources are there, both from infrastructure, from workforce development, and from a, a broader uh, kind of planning support services. So I'm looking forward to learning more about what you guys are doing, what your priorities are, and if there's other ways EDA may be able to be engaged going forward. Great. Awesome. Thanks, Hillary. All right, John. John Ware? Hey, yes. Hello, everyone. Hey, great. Uh, John Ware, I direct the Center for the Environment at Catawba College. I, I teach courses that are related and I just have a general interest. I'm also in a, <laughs> have another meeting going on at the same time for the time being. I'll be able to join in more uh, on page later. But, uh, that sounds great. If you have any questions when you jump back in, just let us know. No problem at all. Glad you're on. All right, Christine, great name. <laughs> Uh, hello, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, we sure can. Okay. I am Christine Wiles. I am the food operations manager for Rowan Health and Ministry. Um, we administer the USDA um, food program for Rowan County. Um, we also have a homeless shelter and soup kitchen, um, which we were able to get some veggies out of our community garden that Happy Roots helped get the work for us. Um, and then we also have a backpack program for um, school children who are in need. So. Awesome. Great. Thanks, Libby. Love hearing about so many things happening in Salisbury. So much to work with. It's really <laughs> remarkable. All right, Michael, I think you've already entered. Do we have two Michaels or just Michael Fine? Nick has gone. Taylor, are you on? Taylor's on, yay! Great. Hi everyone, my name is Taylor Marshall. I'm a senior here at Catawba College and um, I'm also serving as senior class senator for SDA. So we're always looking forward to um, trying to figure out ways to connect with the city of Salisbury. So I'm really glad to be on this call with everyone. Um, and I'm most excited about just learning more about local foods, local places. This is the first time I've heard of this program. And um, yeah, I'm an inspiring farmer slash homesteader. So I'm really excited yeah. to, you know, see what all we come up with together. Great. Oh, and I'm also one of John Ware's students. I'm taking oh, his cool. agriculture class. So. <laughs> That's so cool. Good connections there. Good connections. That's awesome. All right. Is there anyone who has not introduced themselves yet? I'm Libby Post. I am oh, a Libby. dietitian, uh, retired from the school system, but volunteer with many organizations around town. And I love our farmers market. I would, I like farmers markets in general. Go to Winston and Charlotte and Asheville, and I just love to see our farmers market kind of blossom. So, looking forward to this. Great. Glad you're on, Libby, and thanks for that shout out for the market. It's really been fun for us to hear over the course of the few calls we've had just what a sense of pride people have in the farmer's market and what a strong need it served in COVID to provide, um, you know, both the uptick in sales and just the excitement with local growers. Anybody else who hasn't introduced themselves yet? Anyone joining by phone? 
All righty. Well, we um, first I want to ask, we'll get, we'll get the photo, Will. Yeah. Awesome. Great. I do want to ask, we are recording and I just ask on every Zoom call if there are any concerns from anybody about us recording. Are there any concerns? This will only be used for our internal purposes for notes, but any concerns with anybody from recording? All righty. And we'd like to get a group Zoom shot. So I'm going to stop sh screen sharing for a moment and move to gallery view. Um, Will is going to take a screenshot in just a moment. Are there any concerns from anybody in doing a photo? Any concerns? Any concerns? All righty. Well, um, Will, are you yeah. good to go? So everybody get ready. You know, you can make your hair crazy. I wish I still had it. We actually had a, a, a celebration earlier today where we all dressed up. So I don't have my dress ups anymore, but it was pretty exciting when we did. So I want to invite everybody to get ready for a, a photo to celebrate the work of our LFLP. Finally, here we are. Yeah. Will, anything else that you need? I'll turn it over to you for the group photo, getting ready for it. Yeah, just if, if you can turn your camera on, we'll do a quick shot. Do a count of three. Everybody say cheese. One, two, three. Do you want to do one more, Will, just in case? All right. I did two. Oh, good. Awesome. Right. Thanks, everybody. That's fun. Yeah. I know all these um, funny Zoom meetings these days. So with that being said, we're going to transition now back to um, getting into our program. So you can see my screen again now. Yep. Darlene, you can see it again. Great. All right. It sounds like someone else just joined. Welcome. Briefly, who just joined? Name and affiliation? Hi, this is Alyssa Harris with uh, Health Plan in the Rowan County Health Department. Hey, Alyssa, glad you're on. Good timing. We have a great crew on, and uh, we're going to get rolling here. So next, this is uh, where we start to move into a little bit of information about the program. And Darlene's going to be sharing information in just a moment. You might recognize some of the folks in these photos. So big thanks to the, the city and the county for providing some photos and Bread Riot for providing some photos. Um, so our session one, again, as we mentioned earlier, is about vision values and case studies. We're going to be doing interactive sessions a lot tomorrow and today as well. So get ready. It's going to be fast and furious. And to tee us up, to do a deeper dive into the Local Foods, Local Places program, I'm going to turn it over to Darlene to introduce the program, where we are, and where we're headed. Okay. Welcome again. Excited to be here. How did we get Well. Nick and the steering committee did an application to the local program. And the applications are evaluated for their commitment to advancing local food system efforts that are linked to expanded economic opportunity, community revitalization, and improved access to healthy food. And we look for communities who embody all three of those characteristics simultaneously. And so what you see on here, we have three phases of the technical assistance program. There is the planning and the convening and the act phase. As part of the planning phase, um, that involves selecting a local steering committee, which you have met tonight, and they guide the project and participate in planning meetings. And we have three pre-planning calls, which we talked about the visioning and the goals to help clarify them. And then we have the convening phase, which we are in right now, where we bring everybody together in this space where we can talk about the, um, the goals and the visions that the steering committee had started to plan. We bring the federal partners who you've met some tonight, as well as uh, the rest of the community who can have some input into the actions and goals that we want to prepare for. And then the third part is the ACT phase. And in that phase is where the technical assistance team works very closely with the steering committee in three post-workshop calls to help prepare the action plan that the community can work on implementing together. And we can go to the next slide. Great. We can go to the next, okay, there we go. Okay, so you see here, EPA could not do this program alone. We partner jointly with the U.S. Department of Agriculture, but also with other partners who have participated either in sponsorship or just participating in these technical assistance workshops with the, um, and they include the Appalachian Regional Commission, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, 
DOT, EDA, Hillary is here with us tonight, the Small Business Administration, um, Northern Border Regional Commission, Centers for Disease Control, as well as others. And what we try to do is to provide support and resources to support you in the ideas that you're gonna brainstorm and talk about um, over the next couple of days. So any kind of questions, you'll meet them um, even more throughout the workshop and have and hopefully get to hear more about some of the resources that they have. So that um, the goal is, is that we are here to support you in all of your efforts past, present, going forward. We can go to the next slide. So here you see some desired outcomes and some end products for the Local Foods, Local Places program. And as I mentioned before, the process aims to increase economic opportunity, to improve access to healthy foods and revitalize downtowns and existing neighborhoods. And it helps that, um, uh, it helps accomplish this by creating connections, what we kept talking about tonight. Some of you meeting each other for the very first time to hear about the different activities that you have going on and helping making those connections stronger for your local food system and linking that food system to place-based investments in existing communities. So what we'd like to get out is an action plan that is designed by you and it's for you so that you can achieve some of the goals that you'd like to, like, like Hannah mentioned to, um, tonight, the farm to table or increasing the farmer's market. We can go to the next slide. What you see here is a map of all of the different places that we have been in the local foods, like local places program. And these dots represent a story. And your dot is on there as well. Um, you are a, among one of 16 communities that are participating in this program just this year. We're in the sixth round of the local foods, local places program. We received applications, I think we received about um, more than 70 applications this year. So we were able to select 16. And since its inception in 2014, the program has assisted more than 120 communities to help develop their local food system in a way that achieves a wide range of community goals. Um, the orange dots represent the communities from this year and the blue dots are from prior years. And as I said, each dot is a story about food and place just like yours. Um, each one resulted in an action plan laying out specific steps that the community can take to achieve your goals. So I just want to congratulate you again and look forward to, as we're going through, just to start thinking about some ideas that you would like to include in that action plan to help build out to support your community. And I wanna thank the federal partners that are here, including those in region four from EPA who will help sustain and support you in the longer term efforts. Thanks, Christine. Thanks so much, Darlene. And we'll have a time uh, in just a little bit to hear more from the federal and state partners, what they do and what programs. There are a tremendous number of programs that this technical assistance program brings together, as Darlene mentioned, to really help realize the action plan. And the, as I mentioned earlier, the purpose of the technical assistance process is twofold. One, the community action plan. And we all know, especially now in COVID, our, you know, we're being pulled in 500 different ways. When do you get a chance to come together with other folks in Salisbury and focus only on local foods and local places? So the purpose is really to connect you to each other, to develop the community action plan, and then you as a community to realize it. So the whole point of why we're here today is to help ground local um, knowledge, place, ideas, and actions to be able to realize the goals. So it's exciting. And, um, and again, feel free to, you know, loop somebody else in to help make it happen. As a whole for the Local Foods, Local Places program, one of the key things, and we've heard about it in Salisbury through our steering committee calls, a little bit in our introductions today, but revitalizing existing neighborhoods. You know, food is a tremendous connector. And you've already seen, you know, opportunities with the farmer's market. One of the things we've heard so far is to really grow opportunities with the farmer's market. So bringing people downtown is a key repeating theme that we hear in community after community. How to make mixed use commercial corridors and how to grow neighborhoods connected. And often it's food, maybe your favorite restaurant or hot dog stand or ice cream place or burger joint, you know, those are the places that people connect to and, and grow from. So that's one of the keys. Um, connecting local food restaurants, retail outlets, and improving access to local foods. That's really key. And equity is 
is even more important now as less people have access to local foods and less people have opportunities to be able to shop in the way that maybe they even did a year ago. So the, the need for local foods in local places is even more relevant, as many of you know today, than it was maybe even a year ago and a whole new set of real challenges. And so we welcome, you know, both the feel good, you know, it's awesome, local foods are amazing and can do so many things, but there are a lot of people who are really struggling to make ends meet. And that's one of the things that the steering committee has really brought forward in terms of the goals, both around, you will talk about the goals primarily over the workshop, um, but how, for folks who can't put food on the table right now, how can food get on their table? And how can this workshop be a means to make sure that food is on the table, not only next month, but you know, next year and then years moving forward. And that's really, so kudos to all of you for making the time and energy to come together for planning that. So not only around revitalizing existing neighborhoods and connecting neighborhoods, but economic benefits. You know, the economic benefits of local food is huge. Um, you know, for example, in New Albany, Mississippi, I love this. It's a good example of how local foods support downtown and local economies. Downtown businesses saw a 25% uptick in business on the second Saturday of each month when the downtown farmers market, market added music and venues, um, different options to the venue. So there's a lot that can really take place and a lot of creative thinking can happen with the market where it is now. But one of the top goals the steering committee has talked about has also been how to grow connections with the farmer's market for increasing economic benefits and opportunities. So not only is it about growing local farmers and businesses, it's about making the connections. You know, Michael Fine has told us, I still can't get over this, about how meat processing is scheduling out, at least of last month, it's scheduling out for farmers to have meat processed in April of 2021. That's like seven months from now. That's just unbelievable to me. Um, and I, I will say with my, my very quick personal hat on, you know, we've grown, we've had pigs, we have chickens, we have bees, we do, I'm a planner, a facilitator. It's seven months to wait to process animals is a really long time. You can't really say like, hold on, stop growing. So what are those like real opportunities and needs for, um, for local foods and connections? At the same time, as most of you know, money that's spent in Salisbury and Rowan County is going to stay in Salisbury and Rowan County. You have a lot of really tremendous um, champions for local food already. But the more the money that can stay circulating within Salisbury and Rowan County, the more it's going to benefit the community across the board. And finally, many communities have seen that through growing local businesses, retails and restaurants, any vacant downtown spaces get full, become more full. But it's really up to often partnerships that are formed, unlikely champions, local spark plugs, partnerships that you might not have seen an entrepreneur taking a risk challenging to do in today's economic times. So it's those partnerships and safety nets that are formed and often through workshops like this. We've talked about this a little bit in the introductions, but improving access to healthy foods and places is key. You know, how to in other communities, we hear a lot about how corner stores might be the only food that's available in some communities. And often there's not an opportunity to find fresh and nutritious food or even the desire, you know, for, uh, you know, tomato. I know for my kids, like Doritos look more exciting than buying a tomato. But if you put some salsa out, some like fresh salsa, they're going to go for that salsa. So, you know, what are the opportunities there for local fresh, local foods and making, um, considerations around greater availability, access and security, not just physical access, but economic, cultural, uh, and consistent access. So if people from different eating traditions from around the world are living in a community, or if there's a large immigrant population, you know, are there different ways that people have access to the foods and food traditions that are core to who they are and what, you know, what their culture is? So that's really key. And finally, you know, we talked a little bit earlier about production, preparation, and consumption, but all of that is looped together. So as we talk about the goals, those are going to be key. You know, I love this, that health and healthy environments, you know, it's funny how farmers market, people are willing to do yoga at a downtown farmers market space where before there was a farmers market, they're like, I'd never do yoga in public, but they're like, oh yeah, that's a cool spot, let's do it. Especially now, you know, having an outdoor pavilion, a multi-use pavilion that can be used for multiple uses is key. So um, you'll hear, uh, it, we'll share a case study in a little bit in Huntington, West Virginia, which, you know, I, 
again, I mentioned earlier I'm from West Virginia, but it was labeled as America's most obese city. And they use local foods as a really direct um, intervention, if you will, to change that. And it has changed a lot right now, but obesity is certainly on the increase and diet related chronic diseases. So buying local really can help shift that. Um, and there's, there are just so many different health and environmental benefits of local foods that many of you are working on. And uh, we're happy to share more information, but also don't want to share too much so that you say, well, wait a minute, I thought we were here to talk about Salisbury. When we get down to it at the core, you know, equity is at the center of all of this. The whole local foods, local planning process has equity in the core. Environment, economic development, neighborhood and revitalization, food access, they're all connected, but equity is at the core. And that's the overarching theme for our action planning. So the goals and actions to really deepen the connection between food systems, health and economic development, but really foster progress in a way that's equitable and inclusive. And I really invite you to bring that forward in a way that makes sense. And sometimes they're hard conversations and we welcome that. You know, we welcome the creative tension that every single community wrestles with, what the challenges are and what the opportunities are. And, and really thank you for taking time to show up today. So, that is a little bit about the framing of the program in the background. Where we're headed next is just a couple slides on some of the um, processes that we're gonna be using to get to the action plan, some of the resources, and then we're actually gonna be hearing from the local steering committee for a deep dive about what, what the steering committee felt like was important and they wanted to share with you. So we're headed towards an action plan and, and we as a technical assistance team will be talking the most in this first hour and then we will be talking less and you will be talking more and more and it gets more and more interactive um, as we roll forward. So this is where we're headed. Um, we're gonna be looking at four goals and we're gonna be looking at different actions to realize each goal. We're gonna be looking at the assets about what exists now, what can be strengthened or improved. So as you hear the goals, you're gonna, we're gonna be using these goals again and again, and the goals are draft and they can shift. And we're gonna do a quick poll in a moment around them. Identifying partnerships and coordinating different opportunities to realize the goals through actions. And finally, through the course of the four sessions, looking at projects, priorities, actions, and roles and responsibilities to move it forward. So I really wanna encourage everybody to, you know, pull up the notes feature of your phone, find a post-it, get a scrap piece of paper, and start jotting down ideas for actions as they come to you, because we are going to want them really actively and, and use them quite a bit over the course of the workshop. So if you have ideas that come up about how to make something a reality, jot it down or a key person that needs to be involved, we wanna hear it. So this is just an example of what you'll hear about in a little while from our federal and state partners about some of the resources that come to bear through this program. It's really tremendous. You will get as, as part of the final action plan, a report with resources to help make it happen. And there are a tremendous number of opportunities. Now we know some of you, you know, Dottie talked about writing grants earlier and, and Dottie might've written some of these grants and some of you may have, but there's a tremendous amount of federal and state funding out there that communities often don't know about. We've shared some of the resources with the steering committee. It will be part of the final plan. And so a great part of the technical assistance process is connecting you to what these resources are to help make it happen. So the goals, here are the draft goals. And these are the goals that the steering committee has helped develop in, through the original application. Um, and in a minute, we're gonna be putting a quick Zoom poll up to see what your initial feeling is about these goals. Are they on track? Are they not on track? But these are gonna form the core of, you know, we're gonna be doing deep dives around each of these four goals over the four sessions. So growing the Salisbury Farmers Market as a central element to downtown revitalization, number one. Two, increase the local foods economy to support local farmers and economic development. Three, connect local foods and market opportunities to promote health and healthy activities. And four, provide greater food access to the food insecure and the broader community. So start thinking about which ones you are really excited to work about because tomorrow we're actually going to be doing breakout sessions per goal. So we'll be doing it as a large group in our later session today. You'll be able to bounce around between different goals tomorrow if you want to. So one, the farmer's market. Two, growing the local foods economy. Three, health and healthy activities. Four, food access to the food insecure. 
So before we open up the poll, this is just to give you kind of a preview of what some of, we're gonna be using some shared Google documents. Um, this is a, an example of what it's gonna look like later on our second session later today. We have, we usually do this with post-its in person, but we made post-its on the Google Sheet. So each one of you will actually be able to type in directly into this Google Sheet your ideas for actions across the four goals. So we have spaces, we have 20 spaces per goal. We can add more if we need to. We have a process, we'll tell you what the process will be. So we'll start thinking about what the ideas are to make that goal a reality. And steering committee members, you can see that the two initial action ideas we've talked about, which certainly could change, are captured here. There are only two goals that have some initial actions. So this is what we'll be working with later today. And then tomorrow we're gonna to be looking at action detailing. And this is where starting to think now, how do we know that this first goal is successful? How do we know that growing the Salisbury farmers market is a central element to downtown revitalization? Is that five new businesses open? Is that one new farm to table restaurant in a year? Who's gonna help make that a reality? Do we have a food entrepreneur we know who just really wants to open up a restaurant, but they haven't been able to find access to capital yet? So thinking about how to realize these goals is gonna be core to the, our work over the next few days. And then lastly, we're gonna be doing some mapping in our later session. The steering committee started it, but this is another tool that Will's gonna be using later on today that helps look at what are some of the assets, challenges, needs, and opportunities in Salisbury. So it's really fun to use this as a tool. This is called Social Pinpoint. Um, so again, we'll be looking at that later. So with that being said, I'm gonna open up the goal, a poll around the goals. We're gonna be doing just polling a couple different times. Um, over the course of the workshop, not too many times. This is one of them. Again, we welcome for you to jot down action ideas that you think are going to help make this, these goals a reality. Um, the poll, what we're really asking for your feedback on is a quick temperature take now to know what's your general level of satisfaction for the goals. Do you think that they're clear and they make a lot of sense? You're ready to roll? You think they're a good starting point? Do you have some questions? Or you think something might still be missing? Because we're still at a place where, you know, we might be missing some really core goals. The steering committee has done a great job in helping to articulate these early goals, but, but here we are. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this first poll. Are there any questions from anybody before we get rolling with the poll? All right, can everybody see the poll? Has it popped up for you? You see it? Yes, Alyssa saying yes. Great, Alyssa, you can see it. Darlene says yes, awesome. So go ahead, we'll leave it open for about 30 or 60 seconds. Go ahead and, and pop it in there. And then if something's missing, we welcome your ideas in the chat. What goal do you feel like might need to be there that isn't yet? I see 12 of you have filled it out, but we have 24 participants, uh, 13 people, we have half of the folks. So again, if you feel like there's a specific goal that's not on there that should be, please go ahead and pop that in the chat. We welcome your ideas. All right, I see 16 people, we'll leave it open just about 10 more seconds. If you haven't filled out the poll yet, we welcome that you do so. Now, last call. All right, 81% of people. All right, we will end the poll and share the results. All right, so you can see that 72% of people said, yeah, these are clear and they make a lot of sense. All of you can see the results. Darlene, you're good? Awesome. 22%, four people said, I think they're strong, but I have a couple questions. The one person said, I think something's still missing. So that's good. That's really helpful feedback for us. Um, and again, we welcome, I see, oh, great. Awesome. In the chat roll, a couple things have come up. Carol let us know earlier that some farmers are working hard to get ready for the big rain expecting tomorrow, super important. Brian said we could work with local restaurants to make local food more available to diners in Salisbury. Thanks, Brian, for that. Carol mentioned the market needs help with promotion and tie-in events like a touch a truck and listing vendors and food trucks and offering a variety of music. And Cindy said define grow. That is a great question. Um, anybody wanna take a quick crack at that? What do we mean by grow? Any thoughts from anyone? So 
So it could be expand. It could be make it more super awesome. Obviously, you wouldn't want those words. But think the notion is really um, expand. So I'm going to let the steering committee um, touch on that more. And there are a few more great, these are awesome chat roles coming in, chat comments coming in. I'm not aware of something like this exists, but have a local farm program with local colleges to create an apprenticeship program would be awesome and to support local community gardens, awesome. So these are really, a lot of these really clear ideas. If you think that these would be an action under a specific goal, bring it to you know, our next session, bring that idea, write it down, we'll capture them as well. If you feel like we're missing a, in a goal entirely, also put that in the chat role. New goal needed around blank. And we'll have time to be able to think about that. So steering committee members, we're turning it over to you here um, for about a 15 or 20 minute presentation about the local context. And if you have any thoughts about that good question that Cindy brought up about define, grow, other ways you might define that, I welcome for you to bring that up or anything else you'd like to share. So we have, um, again, 15 or 20 minutes. And Nick, I'll kick it over to you first and we'll get rolling from there. So thanks again, everybody, for filling out the poll. All right. Um... So uh, again, welcome everybody and anybody that's a little bit late. Uh, thank you for stopping in. Um, we put together um, a two hour presentation right here of uh, 42 uh, PowerPoint slides. Um, each community mem each member of the committee will speak for 20 minutes. No, I'm sorry. Uh, so uh, we just put together just kind of a quick review of what we kind of gone over. I think what you'll see through this is just that um, through our meeting, uh, for us, it wasn't an end point. This, for us, it was a beginning. Um, and then meeting with all of you uh, starting tonight, tomorrow, and moving uh, you know, into the future is uh, how do we make this work, create more connections. Uh, and when you speak to the word grow, I would almost think the word enhance, um, you know, not just expand in the, size, in the word uh, speak to size, but more like how do we um, uh, enhance something or, um, or or secure it or make it more sustainable. So um, with that, uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, the first slide just basically discusses, um, oh, and I'll also mention that at any point, any of the steering committee members um, want to interrupt me and I'll go ahead and give them license to interrupt at least the other city staff members of Hannah and uh, Latoya, but because we have some things we want to say, but please, we're looking uh, for some comments, uh, but um, we may even call on you uh, to make a specific point um, and stuff that you've contributed. So please be ready. Um, I don't have everybody in front of me, so I don't know who's on or stepping away. So I asked the rest of the group just to bear with me if I call on somebody and there's a pause. So uh, with that, uh, just a timeline. Um, there was some community discussion about uh, the future site of the farmer's market, um, where it was at the time up on South Main um, on a property there. It had been uh, at the um, Maxwell Chambers property, which is now the Bell Tower Green discussion there. Uh, and the city was kind of asked uh, how to assist and what could be maybe a more permanent solution. Uh, meanwhile, the pavilion was getting worked on and um, you know, that was always in the back of everybody's mind, but at that point, there was not a permanent home. Um, uh, this grant opportunity came along. Again, it's technical assistance, just for anybody who doesn't know, it doesn't necessarily mean, and uh, you know, we're, the city's getting dollars uh, to spend anywhere, or this committee is getting any money to spend anywhere. It's uh, more with Christina, her team, and Darlene, and everybody else to come and help us. Um, uh, but the focus kind of shifted once the pavilion was completed, literally the announcement on the pavilion being completed and our award of the grant happened almost simultaneously. Uh, so I had to send an email um, to uh, Darlene and everybody involved to say, hey, the focus is kind of shifting. We kind of have a place. Uh, what can we do? Do we need to just uh, turn this back in and say we're not going to move forward? With that, uh, we created, we went forward with it and created the steering committee. And that's where we are today. We had uh, three phone calls and a couple of meetings outside of the three phone calls. Uh, and, um, sorry, my phone, forgot to turn that off. But, um, so you can go to the next slide. Uh, 
Um, and, you know, one thing that was, that's been discussed, you know, is the previous farmer's market. Um, and, you know, you can read here some pros and cons at the previous place. Um, you know, there was ample parking, et cetera. One of the cons is that it kind of lacked atmosphere. I think in one of the very early meetings before the steering committee got together, somebody in the group uh, made mention that, you know, it could be hot, uh, you know, maybe there needs to be some kind of, um, you know, landscaping done, maybe a play structure uh, to that to that degree. Um, uh, but again, that was one of the cons. And then if you go to the next slide, we'll talk about the pavilion, some of the pros and cons, and then I'll actually ask the, the committee to just speak on if they would mention a sense or two about the previous site and this current site. Um, again, the, um, the current farmer's market, the pros, uh, just the atmosphere, it's just, it's just different. I mean, it, it, it just has a great atmosphere. Uh, one thing that was brought up recently to me this week was just the proximity you know, along to the depot. I mean, you could advertise coming off the train that, hey, that the, the farmer's market is right around the corner, stop by while you're coming into town. And maybe con could be the weather, um, you know, it's not fully enclosed. Uh, so with that, I wanna open it up to the committee members, um, Michael, Brian, Dottie, uh, everybody, uh, and just any of the pros and cons that you wanted to, to bring up to right now, feel free. If not, we can move to the next slide. Okay, we're going to keep it going fast. We welcome steering committee members to jump in, but just, you know, say what, what your thoughts are quick and then we'll keep it rolling. Latoya, I see you unmuted. Well, uh -huh. Nick, um, Nick hit on it. Um, like you said, you know, being next to the depot, I think that's very um, important. And because so many people ride the train once they get off, um, I know we talked about promoting the farmer's market, so that will be a great opportunity to promote the farmer's market and it's in walking distance. Um, as you can see here, you know, um, as it pertains to cons, um, the, excuse me, the farmer's market is growing. So there, there is limited space. Um, and I think it's going to continue to grow. And I think that's the most exciting part is the continuation and growth and vendors and so forth. But, you know, the question may be, well, what do you do moving forward with the growth? Yeah, real quick. Also, um, the pros, all of the farmers have talked about just the ergonomics of getting in in the morning and, you know, they have the shade on top of their produce throughout the day. So outside of just some tweaks uh, here and there, the, the farmers are really happy with the structure. Yeah, and I, I'd like to just second uh, something. We're not second, but... Um, the the access to it has been really good that was a, an initial potential concern of moving but i feel like that there's been access in the back the front and the side um, there's good access for parking and then also um, the farmers that bring in trucks they can get in and out too and having a covered structure i feel like that's a huge win um, not only for coolness but you know when it rains um, something that is fairly unique uh, that we have that's already there. So I think it's been overall a huge positive move for the farmers. Okay. All right. So next slide, Nick. Yeah. Okay. It takes a second. No, it's okay. Probably no. Yeah. All right. So, um, sorry, a little, little lag on my end. But uh, um, Hannah, do you mind just talking? Um, she prepped this slide. I think she's back. She stepped away for a second, just about the connections and. Well, I think I, I don't know. I'm I feel a little unprepared because I am not an, a subject matter expert in any way, shape, or form. But what I've gathered. Um, over the last 18 months is that we've got a lot of different groups who are very, very interested in the farmer's market, in local foods, and certainly in downtown development. Um, but, but we're all kind of isolated islands that are not necessarily working together. Um, and I think we saw this grant as a great opportunity, as we spoke about earlier, to all kind of come into alignment with each other and to be working towards common goals. So this slide was just supposed to show that we're kind of isolated groups. And then the next slide um, talks about how if we can all head in a common direction, that would be a great outcome for this 
for this initiative. And if I, if I can jump in here, um, I just want to second that. I think there are a lot of our groups that overlap, and I think we all have these great ideas, but it's really that effort in finding a way to create that um, action plan so that we have concrete steps to move forward uh, with those goals that we've selected as a um, committee, but also with this whole group of local foods, local places for Salisbury, there's a lot of passion here. And I think there's a lot of appreciation of agriculture and the farmers that we have, and uh, this idea of getting healthy food in the hands of those who are most in need, but also all 142 or 141,000 of us who live in Rowan County. So I'm really excited. I think that's an excellent visual uh, representation of you got a lot of players who are maybe even in multiple groups, but it's about aligning everything to move us in that direction. Uh, I wanted to point out what uh, Cindy Fink just put on the chat, that almost all of these groups are connected through our growing farm and food uh, network, our food policy group. There are a couple key ones that, that, that are not there. Uh, and as you point out, tourism and the city do not come where we share a lot of information and try to help uh, um, make connections with a lot of things. Yeah, it's almost a spider web more so or um, something in the center. Yeah, and I think- uh, And Healthy Rowan, of course, that does exactly this, you know, so. Yeah, that's what I was exactly about to say, um, not to prop up Ms. Harris, but uh, she does a great job with Healthy Rowan of just the coalition of, of uh, organizations. Right. Um, you know, it's a good model to follow. Great. So we've got 10 minutes left. Right. Nick, are you ready for the next slide? Yep. Next slide. Great. And so, and this is, you could probably essentially the same thing. How do you um, take the local foods and local place and make it uh, essentially one um, or, or two working uh, entities together to make kind of one a successful um, venture together? Next. Next. Um, Latoya, if you wanted to, if Latoya wanted to speak and maybe Hannah some just about designing downtown, um, that's more in their expertise uh, uh, about the next two slides, so quick information. Um, let's see here. Well, as you all may know, you know, we have the Bell Tower Green that's um, in the process of being developed. Um, I think we are all very, very excited about this new project and uh, look forward to uh, it being finalized. Um, here, we, I'm pointing, but I don't think you guys can see me pointing, but we have our 2010 master plan. Um, I think Hannah and I are very excited that we have actually went through and discussed our 2020 uh, master plan or some new points for that. Um, but other than that, I mean, downtown and the city is growing with new um, opportunities for development and activation of uh, public spaces. This is just a few. And of course, you know, we have the farmer's market as well, or the rail walk. Um, Hannah, feel free to. Yeah, just, just to add a couple of things to what Latoya said. I, I think that downtown is on the verge of some really, really exciting things. At the center of that is the park, of course. Um, but just to let other people know a couple of things that I think are, I think could put downtown kind of over the edge. Um, um, one, of course, would be a great central, um, a farmer's market. James Meacham and the Tourism Board have been working on developing this concept of a rail walk with uh, the farmer's market being under the pavilion. I think that's a really great, um, uh, could be a really cool kind of district making area. Um, other things that we're working on, um, the, uh, the depot, um, as I think that's been mentioned as a great um, thing, asset that we have in downtown. And they're looking to expand commuter service to, um, to the depot in the next several years by building an additional plat or additional 
um, platform on the other side. So that'll allow increased traffic from areas like Greensboro and um, of course Charlotte. And that's gonna be really key for downtown. Um, we're also looking to re-envision what our Main Street corridor looks like through downtown. We of course have um, kind of four traffic lanes with parking on either side. Um, we're looking at doing perhaps like what, what you call kind of a road diet where you limit the amount of car traffic through downtown. You still have car traffic, but fewer traffic lanes and more space for pedestrians. So we're looking at ways we can um, enliven downtown through those public improvements. Great, next slide, Hannah, yep. you ready? Oh. Okay, great, Nick, go for it. Oh, go ahead, next slide. Uh, um, here, um, this is just a little information for the public. Um, downtown Salisbury, Inc., we are a North Carolina Main Street program, and so um, every year we have to submit a, um, a report based on what um, we did for the year, public, private um, investments, facade grants that were, that were rewarded, um, rehabilitation of buildings in 2019 through 2020. So as you can see here, uh, we had 17 rehabilitation buildings, nine facade grants awarded, um, and then there's the total of our new public and private investments, um, totaling over $5 million um, for downtown. So um, there's great things happening and there's great things that will continue to happen um, within downtown Salisbury in the city of Salisbury. Great, thanks Latoya. About five minutes left. Nick, do you want me to go to the next slide or stay on this one? Uh, well, the next couple of slides, can, we can kind of fly through. Uh, if you want to just go through those and I'm going to point it back out to the committee. Um, but the, uh, the next four slides, I think, are essentially just, uh, I just want the greater group to know is, I used the word when I kind of just put through this together and put this together was the word moldable. Um, it, to me, this is what it's about. We just kind of had a starting block, I think the committee and even with the technical assistance group that, you know, one of our questions was, you know, we, we want to make these just kind of a jumping off point for community members and organizations to come in and say, okay, how can we mold these and, and make them work with uh, um, any uh, action plans um, that have been mentioned. Um, so the next couple of slides are just basically uh, the goals that you've already shown um, in, in a previous slide, which is fine, and you could probably get through the next three or you know the three, maybe is it four slides. Um, and then we've got at the end, we, we talk about opportunities and challenges, and uh, we didn't put everything in here. Um, there's a lot of great information already in the chat. You know, I think I'm sure you're recording that. It'd be great to, to compile. Um, but these are just some of the opportunities. I'm not going to read all of them. Some have already been mentioned in the chat, um, like, co like a co-op commercial kitchen. We've talked about a canning facility, um, you know, for local farmers. Uh, we've talked about could a year-round market survive in our community? Um, is that something that, that is, is a viable option? Um, it gives everybody, again, just a second to look over those, but, you know, um, and just helping uh, local food providers. And then with some of the challenges, um, on the, on the last slide, I believe it's the last slide. Um, you know, um, it's just sustainability. And um, I, I, you know, just not to call him out, I know Brian sent that in, I don't know if he's on right now, but uh, just talking about how can we, you know, carry this forward. And Brian, I don't know if you have any comments uh, to your comment. <laughs> sure, I, I mean, one thing that I've been involved with in the past is where you have a great idea, you have an action plan, and then executing that and making it a reality is a completely different set of uh, challenges. And that's one thing I'd, I would like to just kind of throw out there to the group um, and maybe more for uh, the folks uh, with the EPA and, um, and Will as well, that how do things like this come to fruition? Who's charged with the actual tasking of the goal. 
That's a great question, Brian. Is that one that you're asking the TA team right now, the technical assistance team now? No, I mean, we don't need to tackle that now. If, if yeah. it's, you know, um, uh, Nick can get through his presentation, but it's just something that I want to be, I want to understand and then, and then so that we can make sure that, you know, whatever we do come up with that it actually happens. That's the, you hit the nail on the head right there. That is it. <laughs> any thoughts, Darlene or Will, do you want to share any thoughts in response to that good question Brian brought up? Will says thumbs up. Yeah, that's, that's what we're here to do. Uh, it's, it's a great question. I would, um, last minute, I don't, it's not a lot of time, but uh, any of the other committee members, um, again, this is just stuff that we kind of compiled and uh, we were not the end all be all. That's, you know, this is great. Um, again, it would have been great just selfishly if I could have eaten some good food tonight, um, but um, in this great North Carolina weather, um, but uh, which Will came and visited recently. He came visited our area. So um, thanks for stopping by. But uh, so if any other committee members want to make a quick comment and then hand it over to Christine. Thanks, Nick. Anyone, any other steering committee members want to share ideas or feedback? All right. Well, big thanks to the steering committee. That was very helpful. Will, did you want to add something? Just a great job on the chat, everybody. And I'm capturing all that. A lot of really great comments there. And also just welcome Sasha for getting on the call. And it's great to have you on the call. Yeah, Sasha, you want to introduce yourself? Name and affiliation. Sure. Can you hear me? Sure can. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. You never know. I have <laughs> a setup at home, so you never know. Hi, everyone. Sorry I'm late. I was just giving a presentation to high school youth about what we do. Uh, my name is Sasha Pokrovskaya. I work for the USDA uh, Agricultural Marketing Services, Marketing Services Division. I am an architect and we provide no cost design assistance to communities across the United States. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Sasha. So it actually could be that, you know, someone could go into a breakout room with Sasha over the course of the next few sessions and actually talk through some ideas about a specific space. That would be one possibility, a Zoom breakout room. Or, you know, you might say, hey, Sasha, I really need some help thinking through this challenge we're having with a specific space. Can you help us think of some ideas? So that's just one of the examples about the way the technical assistance team can help bring, you know, ideas to light. Is there anybody else who hasn't introduced themselves yet? Already. Joyce joined. I don't know if she's... What was that? Eileen joined. Maybe she stepped away. Eileen, you might have introduced yourself Did earlier. Did she hear it earlier? Okay. So, um, so I want to echo what Will said. The chat roll is great. Um, we will, a couple things. We will make all the slides available to all of you. So you'll have copies of everything. We'll um, be happy to share the recordings um, with people if that's helpful as well. Although, as I said earlier, it's just for our internal purposes. So it's just really for the local foods, local places. Sometimes people get funny about being recorded. So just you know, know that it's for the local foods, local places. Um, for the ideas that are being shared in the chat role, for those action ideas, I want to invite you to jot those down. We will certainly capture them. We'll bring them forward to the, the next, the future sessions for this TA process, technical assistance process. But if someone says something that really resonates for you, please write it down so that you can make sure it gets included in our next session, because that's really key. There are really some key ideas that are being shared in the chat role. So um, kudos on that. Um, Brian, to your point about how does this get realized, that's key. It's really, you know, the folks who are, are on this online workshop right now and other people who aren't here who you know are really key. But the only way that in any community or any process makes an action plan as a reality is by people deciding to make it so. And by people, you know, we've seen a renewed volunteerism kind of across the country on one hand, people wanting to engage more in their communities and other people are really tired, understandably. So it may be one thing that someone can plug into, one thing that you can get done, but we would encourage folks to start to say, how can I help make this reality or who can I help partner with or tag somebody to help make it to realize the goals. But that's really where that takes place. And what we see, you know, some communities have really taken the action plan and said, okay, you know, that steering committee might keep meeting 
on a monthly basis and invite new people. But it's really having some kind of ongoing basis or ongoing group. It may be an existing community group who can steward the action plan and keep it actively moving forward. But it really often needs to be some kind of ongoing space to revisit the action plan. Darlene, anything else you want to add to that? Good question with other communities? No, I think you covered it. Thank you. Okay. Great. Awesome. Good question, but it, Brian, and, and that really is the heart of it. So we're going to, um, I'm just going to introduce where we're headed next, and then we're going to take what we're calling a boomerang break, a 60 second break um, as people fill this out. So we're going to be asking you to fill out two different questions in the chat roll over the next few minutes. So I'm going to introduce it and then we're going to ask, you know, you feel free to take a 60 second stretch break, do what you need to do and then come on back. So that's the boomerang. Come on back 60 seconds. You can go ahead and answer this question in the chat roll um, or you can do it when you get back. So using the chat function, complete the sentence. I believe local food is blank and we're going to ask each one of you to fill in the blank and um we're going to see that awesome chat roll that you've already been using light up with more ideas so with that 60 second break starts now start populating those ideas in the chat roll and um i'm going to step away for a second and i'll see you back in 60 seconds say hey to somebody totally fine so for those of you on a break we just have a a few more seconds here before we get rolling. I see, awesome. Maybe eight or nine folks have entered something in to the chat roll. So thanks everybody. Let's go ahead and if you haven't put something in the chat roll yet, I invite you to go ahead and do so. I believe local food is essential. Local food should be accessible to all. Catalyst to benefiting every corner of the country, beautiful. I believe local food is accessible, reasonably priced, and better for everyone in our community. Makes me healthy and gets money to farmers. That's awesome. Reflects the values and health of a community. It has an essential role in improving health in Rowan County. I believe local food should be valued and heralded. Beautiful. Um, keep them coming, keep them coming. Should be visible, easily accessible, a connector and foundation for economic development. I believe local food will grow in importance in the future. Mm -hmm. I believe local food can help fight food apartheid. Awesome, as opposed to food insecurity. Beautiful, Taylor. Um, fresh, accessible, and important for the community. Awesome. All right, any other this I believes about local food? Last call. We have one more coming up. Folks have a good break. Good quick break there. Thumbs up, good break, good stretch break. Keep it moving, keep it moving. If you stretch, we welcome stretch. Keep, keep your body moving. Thanks, Barbara's moving, Will's moving. It's good, we like it when you're moving because it keeps your brain active. It's tasty, <laughs> that's awesome. On that tasty note, um, we'll put these into the chat roll. <laughs> Next. Next, um, I believe my community, this I believe, what do you believe about Salisbury? What do you believe about Rowan County? I believe my community is what? This is the second and last one of these. This I believe. Can we invite your ideas in the chat roll here? Great, uh, Dottie got it rolling, has lots of possibility and lots of people to make things happen. That's definitely evident. What else? I believe my community is what? About 60 seconds. Cool, amazing, growing, awesome. Innovative and generous. Oh, what beautiful words. Most communities would I'd love to be described with those words. Truly cares and has great potential. Awesome. What else? Other ideas about Salisbury and Bowie and County? Potential to remind us what it means to be a community again. Oh, that's a quote of the day, Taylor. Keep, keep 
pulling them up there. That's awesome. That's so great. Cool. My community is aware of local farmers and market, but not everybody in Rowan County is aware of the importance of supporting local farmers as well as health and environmental impacts of eating local. Mm -hmm. Taylor for the win for sure. Awesome. All right, last ones. If you haven't gotten your fingers moving yet, feel free to pop them in there. I like to walk around. I like to walk around town and the banners that was be an original. Saw that. I thought that was good branding. Captured it. Yeah, great. And um, the steering committee shared some videos with us that have been put together, and it's really neat to see how the be an original has been used in different ways. And so that's steering committee has also talked about marketing and the importance of marketing connecting. So, um, all right, last call for this, I believe, before we roll into our case studies. Any other this I believe is about my community? <laughs> All right. So we will um, we'll use these moving forward and they will help pave the way, if you will, permeable pave the way, whatever that may be, <laughs> for some of our later sessions. So thanks, folks, for that. So we just have a couple quick highlights. Um, in our last half hour of this session, we're going to talk about some case studies about what some other communities have done that are directly connected to the goals, the draft goals that we've heard so far. So we want to just share some ideas from other places. We also have a number of st um, case studies that have been recorded. So we will actually share in our final package to you a number of other case studies that other communities have found helpful. If there's anything you would like to know about particularly, such as a food incubator, you know, Nick just mentioned a commercial kitchen a minute ago. There's a lot of cool information out there that we're happy to connect you with. So let us know if there's something specific that you'd like to know more about. After we have some, um, a little bit of time for the case study sharing, we'll welcome questions about those case studies. We'll hear from the federal partners about who's in the room, what's their role in the local food system or community development, and then we'll wrap up about when to convene. Again, encourage you to jot your ideas down about each of the goals. If there's an action item that's been shared in the chat, please do jot it down. And, uh, and then we'll, we'll take an hour break at five. Any questions from anyone before we jump into the case studies? All righty. <laughs> and that gratitude from Taylor, haha, <laughs> thank you guys from the chat roll. So, case studies. So, as Darlene mentioned earlier um, in that map, there have been a lot of really cool things that have happened in different communities about local foods and local places. You're going to hear about three different case studies today. Two of them are actually on here. Pikeville, Tennessee, about downtown street state overhaul. Williamson, West Virginia. Um, Here's an example from Bridgeport, Connecticut. We're increasing access to healthy food through urban agriculture and farmers market collaboration resulted in a win. In Alamosa, all about downtown business food access challenges due to high poverty rates. Um, a very little vehicular public transit. But, you know, local food was really the center point in rocking and rolling um, in terms of, of getting activities happening. So, to do a deeper dive, the first case study we're gonna look at is the Wild Ramp in Huntington, West Virginia. Then we're gonna look at Williamson, West Virginia, and then Will's gonna share about Pikeville. So Huntington, I mentioned for the, most of you heard, I'm from the Eastern Panhandle of West Virginia in Hampshire County. Huntington's on the far Western side, closer to the Ohio border in West Virginia. In terms of the kind of the different topics that communities find really helpful from case studies. Um, the Wild Ramp hits several different things. It's really key in this case study to look at how the farmer's market and food distribution and retail connects to downtown revitalization, entrepreneurship, business incubation, healthy foods, community, and action planning. So this is a really cool example. Their website is beautiful. There are a lot of fun videos on it, so I encourage you to check it out. You'll see that in a moment. So the wild ramp started in 2012, still going strong today. What's interesting about the wild ramp is it started out as, you know, very much, you know, you can see their farmer's market. Um, they wanted a place to sell year round. Um, and a, a, that had a feeling of a traditional farmer's market, but to have year round access. Um, volunteers have been really key to the success of the wild ramp over time. There have been more than 100 food producers and artisans who have connected with the 
the retail space to sell their goods, but volunteers, especially in the early days, really helped keep the wild ramp market rock and rolling. As I mentioned, Huntington was mentioned or was said to be America's most obese city. So this was partly in direct response to that, um, to have local foods access to folks. There's a volunteer board comprised of 15 local citizens, and now there are six paid staff who help managers who keep things going. One of the key things here is that producers and artisans um, set their own prices and 80% of the sale goes back to the producers. That's not always the case in a market, um, but it's a really neat example in a number of different ways. And we're not going to watch this video. It's not embedded, but you know, even just their vision statement, it's a year round nonprofit farmers markets. So even hear about what their structure is. Um, their mission is to grow and support a vibrant economy and community for local food, food products and artisan goods. They envision a self sustaining market and that's key and how to do this as a year round hub for local producers and consumers to come together. Their website is here, wildramp.org. I really encourage you to check it out. Um, they have some just really great um, information as well as programming. So more specifically in terms of how the funding structure was set up, initially it came from investors and donors and um, lifetime membership fees. They also had a Kickstarter campaign to get them off the ground. Um, they have store plans for future grants for um, uh, improvements over time, but their producer fees are fairly low. Um, so they really work to support, you know, to keep the money going to local food producers and growers and artisans as much as possible. Um, they have a 24, 2,500 square foot space selling over 100 different products. In 2018, there was $238,000 made by local producers and artisans. And you can see since the opening in 2012, 1.7 million has been returned to producers and artisans. Those are real numbers. Those are big numbers, you know, moving on eight years. That's a, that's a good, you know, they're past the five year mark. So that's really pretty substantial. The average number of volunteer hours per month, 500. That in terms of how to realize an action plan, it's a community who is gonna say, you know, we wanna make this happen. Um, that's what's really, really cool about Wild Ramp to me. In the last couple of years, especially, they've expanded. So it's not just this physical space, not this bricks and mortar facility only. They have a mobile market, which serves various facilities, communities throughout Huntington. They have a snap stretch, which makes buying local food and food products more accessible, EBT and SNAP benefits. They have a lot of different wild foods that are made in house with local ingredients. And for those of you who may not know, what, what's a wild ramp? Who knows what a wild ramp is? Anybody take yourself off mute? Feel free to say, anybody know what a ramp is? Dottie, what is it? It's a wild onion. Thing. Yes, yes. They're good. They're so Very good. good. Wild leek. People say, actually, it's funny. They say, don't actually pull them up by the roots. Cut them off so you'll continue to regrow. But in West Virginia, there are ramp festivals and... Um, you know, more ramp related events talk about building a, a food culture around a specific product. They're obviously often harvested from the wild. Well, the wild ramp has really built their marketing around this particular food item. So there are a lot of, again, prepared items. There's a rentable commercial kitchen housed within the market, lots of educational programs. And I love this fun events throughout the year, such as stink fest. So making fun of wild ramps as being kind of stinky, but amazingly delicious. Farm the table, kids day, and a lot of other programs. So a lot of neat things happen in the wild ramp. Shifting to the east and south a little bit in West Virginia, this is one of the most remarkable projects I've ever heard about. It's referenced in um, a number of different ways and around health and healthy eating. This is a really Can I ask a Body, question go for about, it. Yes. about Huntington? Yes, um, please. You, I, think, I think we know that our farmers now are kind of out of food. I wondered what in the world do they sell in December, January, February? What Great. are they selling? Great question. So in the winter months, I can't answer everything that they have in the winter months, but they're looking at value-added products. So, you know, things that people can can. They do a lot of classes around processing foods. Certainly some of the root crops, you know, long-term storage or things that can be grown in high tunnels or hoop houses like you see here. So a lot of the greens, um, certainly butternut squash, you know, again, potatoes, apples, things that can be stored through the winter. And then 
different things that artisans are making. Meat products are really key there. You know, they you can buy really anything from meat to cheese to honey to dairy products. So it's not just produce that they're selling. So of course that's going to shift, but they're really looking, I mean, pasta, sauce, I mean, you can really get almost anything that you could at a regular grocery store there, but it's all local. I believe that the range they draw from is 250 miles, which is further than oh, some other places. That's a um, long. It is a long way, but most of it is close to the core. They have some fun videos that do provide some additional information on their website too. Good question, Dottie. Any other questions about the wild ramp? All right. Williamson, we'll just hit on this a little bit because I want to just show you the range of the ways that Williamson has um, really considered local food. So this is the Community Garden of Eden. It, it was founded, um, it's a partnership between the Williamson Redevelopment Authority, Central Appalachian Sustainable Economies, West Virginia University Extension and the Garden Club. The mayor provided the property for the garden. It's intentionally located next to Williamson Towers, which is a low-income housing development. And many of the gardens who live at the towers are disabled or elderly. There are over 30 raised beds that allow those in wheelchairs to be able to access the garden. These three high tunnels provide longer growing season and the profits from the sales in the city market support the garden. So this is just one element. Also in Williamson is a Williamson Health and Wellness Center. Now the Health and Wellness Center is, um, it's a certified facility, someone with a health background, Alyssa, you might know what, there's a very specific term for a wellness and health center that it is certified as a, do you know? uh not off the top of my head sorry that's okay it, it's it's basically it's certified in all the ways a health center could be certified Dino Beckett is the doctor who's originally from Williamson who traveled and practiced with the places he came back they have a number of um, doctors and nurses on staff and they consider themselves a local business you can see here so the farmer's market is part and parcel very integral to the wellness center their mission is to create an innovative culture of health that accelerates the positive growth throughout the communities. And they have a comprehensive package of care, including dental, behavioral health, primary care, uh, to all residents of Mingo County, West Virginia, regardless of health. They also do a lot of lifestyle practices, such as exercise, diet, and diversified economic opportunities. So the farmer's market and the local gardens are a key part of it. And you can see their website, um, williamsonhealthwellness.com. So this is the part that I love. Not only is there a market and a health center where people just go just for the primary care needs and that's it, but there's also um, Healthy in the Hills, which Healthy in the Hills is such a very cool program. And you know, look at these gals in the bottom, like they're having so much fun. I see this and I wanna go be Healthy in the Hills with them. So a movement is growing to build a thriving future filled with health. And the website, again, healthyinthehills.com, is connected 100% with the rest of the initiatives in Williamson. They have a mobile market again, we see that is, is happening. But this, uh, Health in the Hills is all about making activity and health fun and part of community. And so, you know, you can watch videos, they have hashtags, they have a passport, you can get to different Healthy in the Hills activities. They have things for elders, for kids, for youth. And it's really creating a celebratory atmosphere. You know, there's Zumba classes or kickboxing. So a whole range of different ways that people can engage in the community. But community building is part and parcel to Healthy in the Hills and is, um, it's really fun. So you can see, um, that it's really a comprehensive and it really, you know, programs and it really touches on a lot of the same programs the steering committee, excuse me, goals the steering committee has identified initially. So pretty exciting there. Um, we're going to travel just a little bit south now to Pikeville, Tennessee, and Will's going to talk about a streetscape overhaul in Pikeville. So Will, over to you. Yeah, great. Thanks. So uh, Pikeville, Tennessee, if, if you're not familiar with it, it's about two hours southeast of Nashville and about an hour and a half southwest of Knoxville. Uh, this is a pretty short case study. I, I was looking at our first goal of the four goals that we have in Salisbury. That's Salisbury's farmer's market as a central element to downtown revitalization. Pikeville uh, had been going through kind of a hard time in 
back in the mid 2000s, they had uh, the Tennessee DOT had built a bypass around the town. It's Route 127 on the, the west side of town. And, uh, but what the, what Pikeville wanted to do though, is to reinvest on Main Street and really try to get tourism back into, into Pikeville and economic development. So they worked with uh, Appalachian Regional Commission, got about a $100,000 grant, as well as USDA, uh, about $50,000, and as well as some implementation funds from Tennessee DOT, about half a million dollars. And they invested in this, uh, these sidewalks and on-street parking and other landscaping here. What you, uh, the top image you're facing west, and then in the image right below, it's kind of hard to see with the text over top of it, but you're facing the opposite direction. And the cool thing about this, if you go on Google Maps and you go down on Main Street of Pikeville and it's Cumberland on the other road, go down on Street View, and when you're on Cumberland, you can see what it looked like before the improvements. And as you get to Main Street, it updates and you can see what it looks like after. And it's a, it's a huge difference. It's, it's a dramatic difference between, uh, between the two. So on the corner here, you have, a, it's a great park. It's a veterans park for uh, military veterans. And uh, as they were doing these improvements on the streetscape, they started to look at this new a farmer's market location, which you can kind of see in the background on the lower picture. And they, they were really focused on um, not the farmer's market by itself, but how does the farmer's market fit within a larger effort? How can it be a piece to a, a wider revitalization in the downtown area? And uh, I will say that when we're pulling this together, we actually have I think, an inventory of probably over 100 case studies and Christine and I, uh, we picked out these three for a reason. So keep that in mind. When we get to the actions uh, exercise later this evening, um, when you're pulling together actions and trying to think of ideas of what are actions potentially under these goals, try to think back to these case studies and some of the things that Christine provided here uh, and examples like this, and, and think about those when you're looking at potential actions moving forward. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Will. Um, so, so excited to hear what other places have going on and it really can provide an inspiration point. Um, so someone, Carol asked, have the obesity rates gone down in Huntington? Some farmers may have high tunnels. So good question. So I just did a quick search. It says here um, from an article in the, what is this, Herald Dispatch from 2018? No, it, um, the city has dropped the title. Actually, the title is America's Fattest City, which I'm just not crazy about that. So that was the official title. Um, so the good news, it's taken 10 years of baby steps towards progress. But um, in 2008, nearly half of all adults, 45.5 in the five county area were obese. It's dropped 13% um, over time to um, less than a third, 32.6%. Um, still above the national average, but it has, that's a pretty significant difference, 13% over a uh, less than 10 year period. So pretty significant. Are there any other questions or points about the case studies from anyone? Any other thoughts or kind of aha moments for some, from some of those case studies you heard that you want to share? Yeah, Taylor. Um, can you hear me all right? Sure can, yep. Okay, um, just with the, streetscape overhaul in downtown uh, farmers market. I really liked that um, despite TN DOT um, building that bypass and diverting traffic from downtown, they were generous enough to give a grant to, you know, support the rebuilding of that area. Like you don't hear many times where, um, I don't know, big corporations or um, construction companies do something helpful to, you know, I guess, quote unquote, make up for what they messed up in that area. Yeah, and I, I give a lot of props to um, really Pikeville, uh, the, the region there, as well as the DOT of acknowledging how transportation can really be a great placemaking uh, tool. 
and right. you know, ex especially being there uh, visiting the farmer's market. The train depot, it, I thought was stunning. Uh, I took a lot of pictures of that. And uh, my daughter, who's four years old, but she, she was running through there and thought it was great. And just how to use the streets there to help with the placemaking, the public spaces. So yeah, I think it's a great point you bring up. Thanks, Taylor. Thanks, Phil. Any other thoughts or reflection points about the case studies? The one in uh, Pikeville piqued my interest um, as well, probably more than the others, although the others were exciting too, um, just because I know that the city's been working on a new streetscape for our main street. And uh, if we can tie that into local foods and uh, the farmer's market, I think that that would really provide just a lot of synergy and uh, good potential there. So thank you. Great. Yeah, thanks, Brian. Anyone else? All right, well, now I'm going to turn it over to Darlene. We have about 10 minutes to see kind of who's who with our federal and state partners on the line. Um, again, we're going to be sharing a lot of links and resources and examples in the action plan. As I mentioned earlier, if there's something else you'd like to know about, like Ryan, if you want to know about other communities who have done a streetscape overhaul, if you'd like to see other examples, let us know. We encourage you to share ideas um, in the chat roll too. And um, so Darlene, I'll turn it over to you for our federal and state partner sharing. Yeah, we have a few federal partners online and I'll start with those external to EPA. And it looks like uh, you heard a, a small introduction from them, but um, Hillary, would you like to share, introduce yourself quickly and just any materials or resources you'd like to share? I know you added something in the chat. Yeah, um, so I'm Hillary Sherman. I work with the Economic Development Administration. I think there's two things I think it's helpful to know about. One is we provide grant-based assistance to support specific economic development outcomes. Our statute is pretty specific to job creation. I'm sorry, um, could, could you speak up a little more and maybe just a little slower so that we could understand you? Yeah, I'll, I'll do my best. Thank you. Um, so e EDA has grant-based assistance to support job creation activities. Uh, this most often in the food space looks like incubators or food support. Uh, for entrepreneurs uh, that are maybe business uh, development centers. So as you guys continue forward with looking at um, what this next steps are, one of the things I'm going to be really interested in is, is you know, are, are there needs for something like that in this? And, and if so, kind of how do we engage from there? Um, we also work with the Keenan Center of Private Enterprise, which is affiliated with the Chapel Hill. And through that work, um, do a lot of work across the state in deploying master's level students to tackle specific issues. So one of the things I'm listening for are, are there specific technical assistance questions that don't get fully resolved as part of this work that maybe we can go back to our partners at the Keenan Center and say, hey, we have this ongoing question, you know, can, can, can we leverage that for some more work? So those, those are two big things. Thank you, Hillary. And um, Sasha, I know Sasha introduced herself with USDA and some of the services that she could provide in design assistance. Sasha, did you want to say anything else in addition to other uh, USDA programs? Sure. Um, can you see me okay? okay. Sasha, we can't hear you. Just a little louder, Sasha. We can hear something, but it's just a little hard to hear you. How about now we can hear you. No, now you're good. Oh, good. Okay. Sorry. Multiple technology challenges. Okay, great. My name is Sasha. Like I mentioned before, I work with the MSD team within Agricultural Marketing Services. I don't think any of my MSD colleagues are on here right now, but basically what our group does is um, provide technical assistance. We do a lot of research throughout the country um, as well as handling the local Local Foods Directory, the Farmers Markets Directory. I will put those resources in the chat. Uh, what I do specifically with my coworker Ron Batcher is provide no cost architectural assistance, technical assistance as far as uh, developing farmers markets, other wholesale facility, um, wholesale market and facility design services. So perhaps there's a community kitchen or an incubation kitchen or a packing plant, um, all of those things that help to move um, 
product to market, that's where we come in and assist as far as architectural services go. We work in um, the beginning stages of design. So we don't do the actual construction drawings, but we work in developing concepts and helping put ideas on paper, helping to look at buildings that might be used adaptively that maybe had a different use in the past and they could be repurposed, uh, historic buildings, for example, or things like that. We also provide third party review services. So we look at um, if you are working with a local architect, usually that's what we recommend. We assist you in the beginning stages and then turn those drawings over to the local architect. And if you have any questions, you're like, hey, I don't understand what they're asking me. Is this good? Could you take a look, please? That's what we're here for. I'll put my contact information in the chat as well as some of the resources that we have. We uh, work across the country on the first come first serve basis. Thanks so much, Sasha. And then I'd like to turn it over to our Region 4 EPA federal partners. Um, we have Barbara Alfano and Andrew Riddle on, so you can introduce yourselves as being local there in the, in the region. Okay, let's see, Andrew, you wanna go first? Sure. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, once again, my name is Andrew Riddle. I am a uh, Brownfields project manager uh, with the U U.S. Environmental Protection Agency in Region 4. And I am also going to post a link as well as my email address uh, within the chat as soon as I finish talking, uh, which will provide a lot of useful information, the link that I post. So it is to our, um, uh, to our Region 4 Brownfield uh, webpage. And so I'll give a brief explanation if you're unfamiliar with Brownfields as what that is, but um, that website will provide further information as what Brownfields are, what kind of grants are available, um, any information that you can really think of should hopefully be on there. And if not, once again, you can reach out to me, but basically Brownfields, uh, you're looking at uh, the federal government is working with uh, local governments, nonprofit organizations, uh, even tribes um, that are applying for different types of grants. And the city of Salisbury actually has two grants currently uh, that I'm working with them on. So one is an assessment and then they are being awarded a cleanup grant as well. And so, um, so, uh, Brownfield is basically uh, a site that has contaminants, pollutants, hazardous material, which makes uh, these sites difficult for redevelopment, uh, revitalization. And so the EPA then works with these uh, communities uh, through grants in order to uh, assist them in revitalizing these, these areas. Um, so yeah, once again, I will post um, post a link that should be pretty useful within the chat if you have any questions or again, feel free to email me as well. All right, well, thank you, Andrew. Um, so Andrew's got the money. I don't, <laughs> I don't have uh, the grants uh, like, like Andrew does. Our grants are more uh, irregular, let's put it that way. So. Uh, we just closed on some um, that won't be available for another couple years. What I have just been lear learning uh, that what we're going to be planning for this year is some regional grants that will focus on our pollution prevention program. Pollution prevention is really quite a wide, uh, diverse uh, set of activities that can be done typically by communities, also by states um, and nonprofits. Um, and it can involve anything like, um, a, like a, a green infrastructure project. Um, and that's, I could put that, uh, Andrew had a good idea. I could put a link up about the P2 program. Um, and then you can kind of go to that and have that available. Um, and then the other uh, regional program that I work with is, is what, it's called sustainable, sustainable materials management. And basically that involves recycling. Um, and that can be as simple as having, you know, a curbside recycling program in your community. I would imagine from what the way I hear you guys talk, you definitely probably, or you would have curbside recycling and a probably a good program. Yeah. So, um, so those type of grants could be for an expansion of that type of program. Uh, for the infrastructure um, uh, and all kinds of things. Uh, also, uh, the other 
type of grant that we might be offering this year is regarding food waste. Uh, that's a big thing in the sustainable materials management program. And that really works well with what you guys are trying to do because where there's a lack of local food, there's also, um, you know, go can go hand in hand with, uh, you know, lots of food waste that it, I think it's 40% um, of food is ending up in landfills rather than going to repurposing or to shelters um, and things like that. So um, that's a whole nother link. I can provide that in the chat. Um, then overall, we do have other opportunities, uh, but I don't really have, there's nothing concrete coming up in the next say 12 months. So, so I'll stick to that. But if anybody yeah. has any questions, yeah. Oh, Andrew, did you? Sorry, I forgot to mention one important thing. <laughs> yep. So we do have a call for proposals. Um, so a lot of different communities, they are um, applying for grants uh, and that closes October 28th. So I did want to mention that. Sorry for Barbara for cutting in, but. Oh no, that's important. So what are those grants for, Andrew? Uh, same assessment. Uh, it can be cleanup grants. Uh, a lot of the grants, it's, it's all going to be on that link that I have right there. Um, but yeah, once oh, again, and so information on that can be found through that link. Um, oh, so that's really important. So Andrew's saying that that opportunity is open now and that's, um, that closes and then it won't be available for another year. Um, if that, that's just typically what we've done is done those Brownfields grants every year. So that is a very competitive process though. So I heard one of you say you write grants. Um, who's the, who's the grant expert here? Is she still on? No. Okay. Daddy's on. Yep, Daddy's there. She's there. Yeah. I I would not go as far as expert. <laughs> Good. Grant writers are so valuable to have. They are. Um, well, yeah. So I was going to say, uh, it's a very competitive, and it's the 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 guidelines for the grants. I think are still about fifty pages. Um, so, so it can be a little intimidating. So it does take a lot of prep work. And I always suggest you work with another, like, you know, like Andrew said, the city of Salisbury already has Brownfield grants. So you could see, look at their grant application and, um, you know, understand what goes into it. But, Great. but yeah. Thanks, Barbara. Super helpful. Yeah, thank you. I would say that our Brownfields grant, our assessment grant runs for another year and a half, I believe. So um, and we still do, our focus has been the South Main Corridor um, on the other side of downtown, kind of where the farmer's oh. market used to be. Um, that's been our focus area, but um, if there are other sites that come up that, um, you know, maybe through this program, if we're looking for a site to expand the market or to do an incubator, um, I'm sure that we would be, you know, more than willing to help fund assessment grants for that mm -hmm. or assessments phase one phase two perhaps and uh you know the nice thing is with the assessment grant funding you can also do um design mm -hmm. uh documents mm -hmm. which well this is kind of taking care of that but you can do anything up to the cleanup great Thanks, Barbara, and good ideas. Hannah, yeah, Darlene. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's it. I just want to do one, point out one thing. I know Taylor put in the chat um, not to lose sight of figuring out how climate change, change affects the ability for farmers to provide food for the community. And I don't have materials to put into the chat for you right now, but I did reach out to a colleague in my office who addresses climate change issues and hopes to have some materials to share with you. So thanks, awesome. all. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Darlene. Thanks, federal and state partners. Really key and really a unique part of this program is to make those connections. So yes, um, we will absolutely make a copy of everything in the chat roll to all of you, both through the recordings themselves, the action plan, and the ideas. So that is coming up. A couple key things before we take a break. Um, one of the main goals, as we mentioned earlier, is to build community. So if you see someone you want to connect with, then I encourage you to reach out to them and say, hey, I want to talk with you. How can we do that? Can we have, you know, some sparkling water over a Zoom call together or whatever the thing is, a distance to, you know, hang out on a bench, something like that. But we really encourage you to make those connections. Um, that's really key. It's one of the things that, um, that really is a great outcome of, of some of the workshops. We will take a one hour break.
We are gonna leave the Zoom room open. So if you wanna stay and hang out and just chat, you're welcome to. If you want to turn your video off, again, if you hover over your image, some three little circles will sh show up. If you click on that, you can turn your video off, you can mute yourself. It's also in your main toolbar. When we come back, if your families are with you or if your dinner is with you, that's totally fine. We welcome it. We do not, we're not concerned if you're chewing. It's the same login for the next session and the chat row will still be up. We are going for the evening because the steering committee said we need to have a place where community members can join after the business hours. So we really do hope all of you are able to join. We know it gets a little late, so do whatever kind of dance you need to to stay active, but this is where the interactivity really begins in session two and it gets more interactive from there. So are there any questions before we take an hour break from anybody? All right, you guys are a tremendous group already, really yeah. remarkable. So great work, great session one, tremendous <laughs> sharing. Um, again, feel free to hang out. I'll stay on for a couple minutes if anyone has any questions. And uh, we'll see you back at six o'clock. And if you can't yeah. join at six, we start at three tomorrow. So thanks everyone. And again, feel free to stay on if you'd like to. I was gonna okay. share my screen, Christine, just really quick if it's, if it's okay. Yeah. Taylor, I'll... I'll let me show you, you had that question. Okay. So, so this is Pikeville. Can you see, can you see the, the street view? Yep. Okay, so this is Cumberland Avenue in downtown Pikeville. And th so this is the before picture. Mm -hmm. um, this is where the farmer's market is currently. This is the park. This is, uh, I, think that, I think that's the court building. Rotate, that's the library. Okay. And, you know, you can see it's not, um, you know, it's just a kind of a typical street. Mm -hmm. And you start zooming down this way. And this is Main Street coming up right here. And you can look this way. You can see parking right here. That, that's really bad access management. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the street there, this old building. So that's the before. Okay. And just to show kind of how that infrastructure part can do some placemaking here. Boom, there's the after. Holy moly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't that wild? So, <laughs> wow. So there's the park. Back there is a farmer's market, which wow. is beautiful. And uh, we've got bulb outs right here. Uh -huh. Bulb outs being kind of how the, the curve comes out here with the crosswalks. Gotcha. Got brick sidewalks, textured uh, areas, and this really bad parking area that was right here it's now right. like a little mini park almost with um yeah. benches and and trash cans and uh really nice street lights so yeah i mean like you said of the the money um that that construction support or financial support from the dot mm -hmm. just like you mentioned and again just keep it in mind I mean, this is an um appalachian regional commission uh, funding and uh, USDA and different elements of this it goes right. for the for the farmers market but it's all those coming together and you can see like what a huge difference that makes and that's yeah. what that's really awesome yeah so I, I just thought that was a, a really powerful before and after yeah it was <laughs> um, thank you for showing me yeah sure it's, you're not frozen now you're good so welcome all back to our evening session. Um, let's move into where we are so folks can see my screen okay? Mm -hmm. Good, great, awesome. So we hope you had a good dinner. If your dinner is with you, that's great. Feel free to continue munching, no problem at all. Um, let's see, we are on session two. So we'll be here from six to eight we will have a chance to do a little mapping in just a few minutes and then we're going to move into actually starting our actions for the goals as a large group so we're excited to bring in all those good ideas that happened in our session one and uh, and really start you know moving into how to realize the goals so we're really looking forward to it do we have anybody new is everybody was everybody on session one i think everybody was here anybody new all right, great. So again, we, um, so I don't need to spend time on this. We welcome 
you to turn your video on if it's comfortable for you. If not, that's totally fine as well. I welcome you to mute and unmute yourself when you're speaking um, and just jump in. We'll continue to make use of the chat roll. Any questions or concerns from anybody about technology or, or how things are rolling so far? We doing pretty good so far? Things, things feeling good? Awesome. Double thumbs up. Yay, I like seeing that. That's great. Really appreciate people's time this evening. I know that, that evenings are a precious time with family, so appreciate your time here. And again, if your families, again, animals, food, all welcome. So you are all here, but here are a few of the, the highlights that we heard earlier about, I believe, local food. Um, valued and heralded, accessible to all, and help fight food apartheid, fresh, accessible, and important for the community. We heard that I believe about my community is amazing and growing, innovative and generous, truly cares and has great potential. Um, opportunity for growing awareness as well about local farmers and the importance of health and environmental impacts of eating. And I believe my community has the potential to remind us what it means to be a community again. So again, such beautiful words. So really wanna just bring that in as we move into how to realize some of the goals as well. So the chat role is still all there. Um, the things that folks said earlier, the different ideas. So we know some folks are going to be back on session three who weren't here, uh, who were here in the, uh, session one. But here are our goals. As we move forward, if we need to shift the language of the goals a little bit and, and you have ideas about how to do that, we welcome that. So where we're headed now, since we, we all are, are caught up on what the virtual space looks like, I'm just gonna give you a, a quick reminder about the goals and actions. And then we're gonna spend a little bit of time in social pinpoint again. Well, I'm thinking since we have steering committee members and non-steering committee members on social pinpoint, we may spend 20 minutes or so. We'll just see how the group is going. Um, but what we wanna look at with the mapping is, Will's gonna take us through a, an exercise that the steering committee has participated in, but there are layers and layers that we can build into deeper about opportunities and challenges in Salisbury. And I want you to really consider the four goals for the action plan and to think about the assets and challenges around each of the goals as you look at the map. So when you see the goal here, you know, <coughs> the second one, increase the local foods economy to support local farmers and economic developments you think about that goal when you're looking at the map and where are the local foods restaurants if any now where where are the local foods and farmers and what actions might be needed to kind of help make these goals a reality when you're looking at the map so i want to encourage you to continue to welcome jot down ideas and jot down things as they come up um, as we move forward so um We'll do just another round of intros in just a minute for anyone who's just joining. So if you're just joining, welcome. We'll do intros again in just a minute in case anyone else joins. So here are our four goals. And, and again, this is what we're getting to after we do the mapping. And this is where it starts to get exciting when we hear your ideas. Um, you know, we'll use the shared Google Doc to start putting together the action plan about how to realize the goals. And then that, the action detailing itself is what we're we'll moving to tomorrow. However, if you start to get some specific ideas, we welcome them around how to measure success, the lead role. And uh, with that, I think we're gonna go ahead. Rafaela, would you like to introduce yourself, your name and affiliation and anything you'd like to share about your work? Hi, yes. Oh, it's breaking up just a little bit. Uh, can you hear me okay now? Yep, that's better. Uh -huh. Can you hear me better? Yep, yep, that's uh -huh. great. Okay, perfect. Um, so good e evening, everyone. Good evening. Oh, it's breaking up a little bit. And federal partners, EPAers, and my name is Rafaela. It's breaking up. It's on and off. Keep going. Yeah. Can you hear me good. better? Keep rolling. It, it, it sometimes helps if you turn off your oh, camera. Okay. Okay. So Raphael, if you actually hit stop video, that might be helpful okay. just for your so let me introduction. Try, let me try that. Or I can yeah. even call in with my phone. That would be fine. Or just okay. for, oh, let's try that. Feel free to go ahead and introduce yourself. Can again. you hear me? Yes. Sure can. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
Yep, go for it. All right, hi. So yeah, this is Rafaela. I'm uh, with EPA. So I sit in the Atlanta office. Um, I work with um, everybody in the OCR team. So I'm representing the region, region four. Um, so I'm here to make recommendations, facilitate any coordination uh, that's needed and identify resources for everyone. Um, so I'm happy to be here and um, sorry, I missed a few of the sessions earlier on today. Uh, we had another workshop, so I'm, I'm thrilled that I was able to make this one and I hope to uh, miss some other ones tomorrow and make uh, a few sessions tomorrow as well. So thank, thank you. you. And yeah. Um, yeah, I see you already have the map open. So uh, I, I, I'll pass it on to you and we can start digging in. Great, thanks, welcome. Darlene, Nick, anything else you wanna add before we jump into our mapping exercise? No, we're good to go. All right, great. Nick, anything else you wanna add? No. Nope. Right. Okay, awesome. Well, Will, I'm gonna turn it over to you. We'll spend about you know, 20, 25 minutes or so in social pinpoint and uh, we'll need to ask folks to open up a new browser window as well. I'll go ahead and, did you put this in the chat roll already? I put the link in the chat, yeah. Great, awesome. So um, I'll turn it over to you to introduce it and ask folks to go ahead and open it up. Okay, great. Do you mind if I share my screen? Go oh, for there it. you go. Got it. Awesome. Well, hello, everybody. Thank you for um, working on this particular activity. I, this is actually one of my favorite activities with these LFLP workshops. Normally, if we're in person, we have a map laid out on a table and you're putting sticky, sticky notes on and marking the map up. One of actually the benefits of going virtual is we have this really nifty map where you can drag points on. I'll do a quick orientation, <clears throat> describe a little bit of, of how this works. And uh, each one of you should be able to pull some of these, these spots down onto the map. And I'll just show you very briefly um, on here. What you do is basically click on it, click hold down and you drag it out onto the map and you let it go on the location where you want to put that, that point. In each point we have one, two, three, four, five, six categories. Uh, the first one is favorite things. Um, and I, I do realize that <clears throat> COVID uh, might change, uh, you know, our behaviors of places we go and, and um, you know, favorite things of what that might be. But let's put COVID aside and kind of place it over here for, for a little bit and just focus on, on the area with that out of the picture. <clears throat> so this first dot, the little thumbs up, is favorite things. That's places uh, are things that you love most about the community, uh, you know, places to visit, enjoy, uh, the things not to miss. If you have uh, someone coming in town and you want to show them, show them Salisbury, wh where would you take them? And it doesn't necessarily have to be food related. It could just be um, somewhere that, that you're really proud of and represents your community. <clears throat> the next one, the explanation point in the red, it uh, needs fixing. And that's anything large or small that needs some attention or some sort of care improvement to it. Um, again, it does not have to be food related. Uh, it can be a neighborhood with poor food access. It could be a building that's blighted. Uh, it could be sidewalks or something else that you think needs attention. <clears throat> uh, the third one is opportunity. That's the star, uh, the yellow star. And that's anything that represents an opportunity around local food or placemaking, economic development, health, anything like that. Uh, I do know that, you know, sometimes we get questions of what's the difference between needing fixing and opportunity. Um, it could be both. Um, you can put two dots on top of each other if you'd like and, and show it as something that needs fixing and an opportunity. But generally opportunity is, is something a little bit more specific that's more positive and forward looking. <clears throat> Uh, food system supply, that's any part of the food supply uh, system, like producers, farmers, aggregators, uh, you know, commercial kitchen or any type of food supplier. Could be, um, if you know of any gardens or uh, farmers that are within kind of this area, if there's any kind of urban farming options. Then food system access, <clears throat> that's the, the knife and fork. 
it's any place, location, organization, business, or institution where people get food, um, like stores, or retail, restaurants. We had just mentioned, uh, some of you said what you were most interested in or excited about was uh, farm to table restaurants. So one of the things that we would wanna look at is where are there restaurants uh, in this area, ones that are specifically notable <clears throat> that we should put on the map, ones that are unique, that have some sort of um, a unique aspect to them or a favorite place there. And then food system knowledge. So any place or organization that has you know, some sort of educational component, like a nutrition education, cooking classes, um, like uh, community classes that people can learn more about, uh, about food in particular. So if you click on the the welcome little I welcome on the sidebar. You, you can kind of see those definitions laid out if you want to take a look at that. And I'll just demonstrate on this. Um, you can zoom in and out. If you zoom way in, you'll see there's all these little dots here. This is act, the base map is actually a Google map. So it's, it's a typical Google map and you pull the dots on top of it. So when you zoom in, um, it can be a little confusing with those dots, but just know that those are just kind of your, your typical Google um, Google markers that are on a map. It might help with, with kind of finding your location. Maps aren't always super intuitive for everybody, <clears throat> but you can kind of see when you zoom out, the, the dots that people have made um, really pop out there. So one thing you can also do is click on comments that, that people have already included here. And so right here is a farmer's market. Um, and what you can you can like uh, or dislike, or you can add a comment to it. So if, if someone listed something, you can add a comment <clears throat> in there and, and add some more information if you'd like. And like Christine uh, said, the, the steering committee went through this exercise on a call a couple weeks ago. So they started putting some dots down. We included the link uh, in the invitation. And we do know that some folks have, have put some, some points down already. And what we were hoping is, you know, kind of, you know, click on them and see if, you know, see what people have identified. If you want to like or make a comment. Also seeing what other locations I noticed, you know, you know uh, Livingstone College, you know, I don't see any points there yet. Uh, any parks could be could be spaces, any schools, is there any food programs at local schools? We, we wanna see that <clears throat> and, and have those on the map as well. Any organizations or programs that, that you think are important or noteworthy, have that on there as well. Uh, we have Catawba over here as well. So, and well, you're hoping folks will open this up in their own browser window. Is that yes. correct? And go ahead yeah. and start playing, or how would you like for folks to engage with this? Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, so if, if you click on the the, the chat uh, function, I have the link in there. And if you can click on there, you'll see the same window that I see. And I'll talk. To, I think I just see a couple of new points actually. <clears throat> You can go ahead and just start start grabbing points and dropping them on the map. If you're having a hard time doing that, uh, what you can do is you can just talk and tell me and I'll drag it on the map for you if, if you're having a hard time or if you're, if you're calling in and you're having a bad connection. If I can help drag those on for you um, if you want to start pulling those on. And as you're doing this and thinking through it, <clears throat> so something that's really important here is uh, we're talking about our goals, um, and we can talk about assets and what's in the community. Um, but this really helps illustrate it. And when we get into the action brainstorming a little bit later, I want to make sure that you keep this mapping exercise in mind, just like how we had the case studies that we reviewed earlier um, on that, that first session, to keep those in mind as you're you know, brainstorming different potential actions. Same thing here is as you're clicking on dots and you're seeing comments that people have placed on the map, as you're putting your own dots on here, I want you to try to keep that in mind when we get a little bit later in the agenda um, and we're starting to think about those actions. So if, if you click on that link, you should get this view. If you're not, let me know. 
Let me know if you can't. I'll try to keep an eye. Any on questions? That. Any questions? So <laughs> Ashley's driving right now. She'll have lots of places to add. That's awesome from the chat roll. Yeah. Nick has added one point in the chat roll too. You can also grab the corners just like any browser window yeah. and reorganize your Zoom box. So you can actually scoot the Zoom view over and you know, just like the corner of an internet browser window and reorganize the size of the map itself to see it too. So what other other questions for Will about how the map mm -hmm. works? Hey, Will, can I say, um, this yeah. is just speaking from the eye, yeah. what works better for me, and I don't know if just for everybody technically, <laughs> maybe it makes some difference. I copy and paste it copy into paste. Chrome. It works better for me in Chrome uh, versus yeah. Explorer. So if you're having some issues, maybe switch over to Chrome if you have that uh, on your desktop, so. Yeah. Great, thanks, Nick. That's exactly the type of information we like to, like to hear. I'll let folks. Uh, well, do, well, do we have to add our name in order to do it and add comments and all that stuff? How do I, I couldn't figure out how to enter. Oh, okay. Well, let me, let me illustrate one. So I'll put down uh, Catawba. Let me put a favorite place. I visited there recently. My mother-in-law went there and she gave me a tour. So when, when you pull that down, um, <clears throat> you have to uh, put a comment in. And yeah, the, the way this you is- You have to put in a comment. You have to put in a comment and it could just be- um, you know, The copy. Beautiful uh, campus, which it is. And it, you know, in terms of name, you can really, you can just put, you know, just anything in there, that's fine. And then, if you just put your email in there once, that, that should that should um, remember it after that. And then just add your comment. And if that's if you're having problems, you can also just tell me and I can I can try but to point do you, you do you have to hit enter or something to make it stick? Uh, yeah, you have to hit there's that button at the bottom, the bottom right hand corner. Thank you. Uh-huh. So who let's see here? So we have a few new dots. Happy Roots PNR partnership. Five minutes ago, who who put this one down? Nick, do you want to talk about that one just a little bit? About what? Sorry, trying to find the mute button. Um, yeah, uh, and <laughs> Ashley is driving, uh, so please be safe if you're trying to respond. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah. So. Uh, Happy Roots does uh, some programs. Well, they were before um, COVID. They're still doing stuff, but um, even if you go back to last summer, uh, they were working with some of the kids from our Parks and Rec department over at Miller Center in the West End and doing some stuff with those kids. Um, and there were plans to do more things, but unfortunately that's on pause. Uh, but she's, uh, Happy Roots has done a great job out there. Um, finding resources where sometimes we don't have those resources of turning, no pun intended, but turning that garden over. Um, we've had, it's been used in the past and I think we had some vandalism there before I came where a group had some success and then someone came in and damaged everything. But um, Happy Roots has been great about getting out there and, and putting in some work and working with our public works department and um, trying to make it down the stretch. Yeah. Hey, I'm here. Thank you so much, Nick. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I actually was just at West End a little while ago. We did a small uh, summer camp through Parks and Rec. Uh, all the kids wore their masks. It was super cute. They, um, they listened so well and they had a blast. So we had a group out there that planted uh, not too long ago. And we usually have like um, Timber Ridge juvenile treatment center they they come out about two or three times a year to help um in different groups we have girl scouts boy scouts um community service workers so you know all these people in the community tend to it um we and we've also used some of the produce over at the neighboring preschool at price head start um we've supplemented their school garden with some of the things there 
So, yeah, thanks, Ashley. What's up? We had a, another Can I comment. Chime in? Oh yeah, please do, please. Um, I just uh, wanted to point out the point, or I think I put an opportunity point mm -hmm. on Catawba Colleges. Um, yeah, we have a garden area. Oh, uh, awesome. we have raised gardens. <laughs> that's my current one. <laughs> yeah, that's um, awesome. Thank you. I'm I'm taking Dr. Ware's uh, class, urban cult urban agriculture, mm -hmm. and I was just thinking about how um, when we first got there, there was just a whole bunch of weeds that had grown <laughs> out, and um, just a, it was really grown over. And I was just like, why isn't anyone using this space? So I was just thinking maybe um, for the summer, whenever there aren't any students on campus, Ashley could utilize the space for Happy Roots. Yeah. and be able to, you know, grow more food for the community. Yeah, that's, that's a great comment. Mm -hmm. So I, I will say the deliverable, deliverable for the local foods process, the LFLP process, it's that action plan. And, you know, we're going to go through those action tables later, but, you know, keep in mind the action plan, we have three more calls with the steering committee after the workshops. And the document itself, it's an appendix full of resources, of case studies, uh, funding resources, uh, more information of where you can find um, ideas and so forth. It's this big wealth of information. But the other deliverable of the LFLP process is the process itself. And, um, and just what you mentioned here with the mapping, this is where a lot of things come out. The last one I worked on, um, someone put a dot down and said that they offer this program and someone who they know really well and they talk to almost weekly didn't know that that program existed and said, wait, wait a second, I didn't know you had that program and it, it really got the conversation going. And so um, that's one of the reasons why I really like this exercise. Okay, so we have, we, we had this dot right here. This, this was about six minutes ago. Neighborhood market would be wonderful for our local foods. Who put this one down? I think I did. Or, oh. Well, I marked the one um, Ants Market off of North Long Street. Okay. Ants Stop and Shop, I put a, a, a yellow star. And I also okay. see that the East Spencer Head Start is labeled. But uh -huh. there's, there's also a Head Start on 15th Street off of Main Street. Oh, okay. Down in the uh, Pine Hills uh, apartment complex. Oh, great. That I don't see a symbol to mark that, yeah. but they do provide meals for those children there. Okay. Oh, are, are you able to put a dot there or is someone um, else could? I don't. Uh, what would I put? What I put? Uh, it could be if it's food system access, if they have program there for kids or yeah I probably could yeah but that sounds exactly like something we want to see yeah. uh Alyssa it looks like you you put this comment here yeah. hi yeah I put it um there as well as Latin mix I put it at McLaughlin's grocery store and at Latin mix down by yeah that one uh -huh. um I don't they do sell food so I didn't want to mark it as an opportunity but I'm not sure how much I know McLaughlin's has like some bananas and and they might have other local food but I imagine these areas like a lot of people walk to to get groceries and so the thought like if there is a way or if it hasn't already if it's not already done it would be great to sell more local produce there or have it be a place and maybe Dottie could speak more to that and I might be wrong it might already be happening um, but it was just the thought I thought it should be on the map. Uh -huh. That's perfect but one of the things that we just applied for a grant for is to work with some of our corner stores so so uh, and get so what we're proposing <laughs> is that we use money to buy produce to kind of seed some of these stores so the uh, owners can find out if they can sell it. So they would, they would sell the produce that we give to them and see if that becomes a doable thing. So we, we should have some money for next summer to do that. And that's through Bread Riot, Dottie? Well, uh, 
to the food policy group. Sounds good. Then we had the Rowan Helping Ministries. Yes. Who put that one down? That wasn't me, but I support oh. that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I put that one in. Oh, awesome. Do you want to talk about that just a little bit? Or is that the one you just talked about? Well, we have um, two satellite pantries. One is at the east at St. Peter's Lutheran Church. And then we also have another one in the west part of the county, which is at the old Mount Ola Fire Department. So we've got that space. So those are both two food pantries and USDA pantries that people are allowed to access once every 30 days. And during the school year, um, you will have access to volunteers from Catawba College because um, we have like this volunteer uh, organization slash club and um, we have someone who facilitates those um, volunteer opportunities for us. Oh, wow. Yeah, we're already starting to see that with um, our Food for Thought program, which is the backpack program. Um, awesome. Taylor, also um, Cindy Fink, who's with Meals on Wheel, mm -hmm. they are looking for some um, shoppers for seniors that can't oh. still get out. Okay, <laughs> thank you for letting me know. Uh, what was that again? Meals on Wheels. Meals on Wheels. Cindy Fink. Thank you. <laughs> Here I am. There she is. Good connections. I love these the connections that are getting made. So again, folks are welcome to put um, your contact information in the chat roll. We'll be sharing it again after the workshop. But if, if something comes up that you want to share beforehand, feel free to. We have just a, like a little less than 10 minutes, just a little over five minutes. So again, you know, think about the farmer, the four goals, farmer's market, downtime revitalization, local foods economy, uh, health and healthy activities, uh, greater access to the food insecure in the broader community. What are the goals, the challenges and, and assets around each of those goals as you're looking at the map and you're looking in and out and where are connection points? Where are potential actions that you can see for each of those goals based on some of the things that need to be fixed or you know, where there's a food supply option? Um, Will, what else would you offer in terms of connecting the map to the goals and actions? Yeah, just um, again, it, you know, we want to get as many dots on here as we can. One of the things that's great to see with this activity is you can already see, look at the clustering of where those, these dots are. And if nothing else, just that's something that speaks to us a lot as a technical um, technical assistance committee. As we look at this and see, you know, oh wow, oh, wow. The people who participated, they're really proud of this area. It's also a lot of opportunities. Um, there's also a lot of food system knowledge in this area. And so it helps us focus in on certain parts of the community. Um, you know, we encourage as many dots as you can think of, but also take a little bit of time as you're looking at this to click on some of the other dots and see what people are saying. And when we get into the action brainstorming, just try to, it's, it's a lot of information between the case studies and this, just try to keep it in your mind as, as you're thinking about those actions later on. Then this is, who put the, what park is this? Hurley Park? Mm -hmm. Should I add school gardens? I just put it in the chat, but I can talk to you guys now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, please do. Oh, yeah. Uh, what, what hey, Ashley. The uh, foods, food, which one would that be? Oh, um, so the, it could be, it could be opportunity. food access, could be opportunity. Supply, um, maybe? Yeah. Could be okay. supply, yeah, especially with any, anything garden, well, anything garden related. That's that's food production, sure. Definitely. Are there any? Um, have we put dots in all the schools that have food programs? Man, I'm struggling. Sorry, I'm. <laughs> no problem. No. You know, yeah. We'll con this map really is yours as a community. And so yeah. it will continue to be available. And we hope that, you know, in an ideal world, you continue to cross-reference the action plan with the map. 
and the action plan with the map. And it continues, you know, to be something that you can work from. And it's something that you can add points tomorrow morning. And we can look at it in session three at the beginning too. Yeah. And I, I am going to leave this map open. And so if you think of something later on, which is, which is usually very common, <laughs> um, and you think of something later on, if you wake up at one o'clock in the morning <laughs> and think, you know what, I should have put that dot down. It's open. You can, uh, you can definitely do that. I have one um, quick thing. Yeah, go for it. I don't know if, uh, if someone could help me figure out what street it's on. I would like to ping an opportunity for um, the local, I guess you could call it the art museum slash school or whatever. Have, yes. Um, I was just thinking like, I like um, finding ways to connect things. So if we could create a, uh, create a connection with the arts and the foods, I think that'd be cool. I do know that uh, they actually had a class one year, it was probably last <laughs> year, and they made art out of cake, which was cool, so. Oh, yeah. it's on Liberty Street. Okay, thank you. Okay. The corner of Liberty and Lee. Liberty and Lee, thank you. Mm -hmm. I, I will show one more thing with this map that makes it a little easier. One, if you wanna share it with anybody, and want to send it off to someone who can't be on the call today. Um, you can certainly afford it to them and we have all the instructions here. Another thing is if you're looking for a location, you can go and search and actually uh, type in, you know, a location and, and it's, it's, a Google, it's a Google map platform. So it'll, it'll take you to that location, but it helps. That does help navigate. Let's look at this. Um, so, Christina, what's the time left? Yeah, we have about one more minute left. Um, okay. So, if people are having a hard time adding points, it's great that people are putting them in the chat roll. We can actually add them yeah. from the chat roll mm -hmm. to the map as well. Yeah. Um, any any other questions or comments about how it works? Anyone else have things you want to add? As, um, as my question uh, for both of you. Um, so this this is great interactive. Uh, map and you'll leave it up. Is there a way, I would assume there is, which I haven't looked at I've had enough, I guess if I looked hard enough, I could see it, but that we could print this once all the icons are up on yeah. a large scale. So that way, if we have meetings with a lot of the people here in, in the future that we could pull these maps up and it just gives everybody a quick reference that, you know, moving forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think there is a way to um, kind of copy the map and have it as a resource for you, for sure. We can get some more um, information from the rest of our broader team tomorrow as well about different export yeah. options for the maps, you know, whether you can, yeah. you know, print, I mean, that wouldn't be hard to just leave the probably needs fixing, depends on the size that you print. It's really designed probably as an interactive digital tool the most. Um, so it might be something you can even pull up in a team meeting and continue to use, but really this map is accessible to any of you, as Will mentioned, in the middle of the night, in the daytime, and it will continue mm -hmm. to be, but we can look at what options are out there for exporting and printing, um, as well as time frame. I think it will be up for a year, is my guess, from this point, but we should confirm that with the rest of the EPR team. Yeah. Um, or the, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, any other just kind of just reflection points about the map? Did anything surprise you about it? Any learn anything about new places? Any any gaps or any actions come to mind seeing the map so far from anyone? Any thoughts about those questions? I just appreciate um, seeing what different parts of Salisbury people like. Um, I haven't been able to get around to everything, but um, I just like seeing things that I didn't even know was around. So, yeah, yeah definitely. It can also be in interesting to see not only where there are dots, but where there are not dots too. Um, so that's something to look at as well. When you look back at this okay. later is, is an area that d doesn't have dots and can we fill that in somehow or um, that can kind of help us uh, where to focus efforts in the future. Those places without dots might be a food desert. 
Mm. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. All right. Any no. other kind of thoughts or reflection points from others? Go ahead. It would be nice to be able to identify the senior apartment mm. um, in and around um, Salisbury because mm. we, we have found that there a lot of times that the seniors in those apartments are unable to get out or they're not as um, you know, they may be on a very limited income and they may receive USDA boxes or maybe they need services or, I think that would be a good um, thing to identify. Made a note of that, that's a good point. I, I think you all have done an awesome job with this map so far, by the way. And I, I really appreciate uh, the technical committee I mean, the steering committee taking a look at it first and kind of giving us some points to, to look at, uh, which I think helps helps us in the workshop. And it, it'd be great if, when we look at it tomorrow, you know, kind of digest this a little bit more as we get into to those action tables and start really thinking about what it is you're aiming to do under these goals that you've identified. Great. Any other last uh, thoughts before we transition to using the map towards our goals and actions? Any thoughts from anyone else? All righty. Well, I want to encourage, first, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Will, for social pinpoint mapping. It's awesome, and this will yeah. continue to be a resource. Great to see all of you. I want to encourage everybody to take a 643 stretch. I want to, if folks can do 10 jumping jacks, Touch your knees, touch your toes. I'm gonna go do jumping jacks. I do actually, Nick might lead an exercise activity right now. So everybody, 10 jumping jacks or whatever you need to do will reconvene in 15 seconds. All right, did anybody do more than 10 jumping jacks? <laughs> Nick? Yeah, I couldn't, you couldn't count them fast enough. I, I was flying. <laughs> you were so fast. <laughs> it's too fast. It's like just a blur. Too fast <laughs> to see. <laughs> so keep your energy up, folks, uh, as we go into, um, see, it looks like it's getting maybe a little darker in Salisbury. If Ashley is, is it totally dark outside, Ashley? Oh, uh, like no, not know? yet. Not yet. Okay, cool. Um, Mr. Ball. Yeah. yeah, go ahead, Daddy. Uh, there are two Michaels on here. I don't know. There's Michael Fine, and I don't know who the other Michael is, who was not with us this afternoon, I don't think. Hey, Dottie, one is my computer, and the other is my mobile, oh, and I'm switching yeah. back and forth. Okay. okay, thank you. Great question. So Thanks I, for bringing that up, step out, Dottie. I'm on mobile. Thank you, Dottie. Yeah, I appreciate <laughs> that, Dottie. And has anybody else joined who's not introduced themselves yet today? Anybody else? All righty. So here we are. Um, we, I just popped in a link in the Google chat. We'll just do this twice. There's only two additional documents we'll be working with during the session today and sessions tomorrow. And they're awesome. Um, I say they're awesome because it allows us to work collaboratively in a way that if we were in person, we would have shared paper, shared pens, shared post-its, but we're able to replicate a lot of what we do in the in-person session online. So I want to, um, this slide has so much information on it. So bear with me just for a minute here. Here's where we're headed for the rest of the, this evening is starting to move into action planning. So we have four goals, which you can see on the slide. You've heard them, you'll heard, you've heard them um, about them already a lot. You'll hear about them more because again, they are the core of the action plan. If we need to tweak the language of the goals or potentially add a new goal, this is where we'll talk about it today as a large group. So this evening, we're gonna be looking at the goals and action as a large group Tomorrow during session three, we'll actually break into the four goals and do a deep dive into the actions. We're going to do some prioritization of the actions tonight. Tomorrow in the small groups, we'll do some further prioritization and then move into those action tables. And it's um, 
really cool the way that the sessions do build on each other. But again, we'll be able to catch people up. So we'll orient folks tomorrow to what happened tonight. They'll have a chance to add their ideas. They'll have a chance to do some prioritization. So it looks like a lot of information at the moment and it's gonna, you'll be able to see where we're headed. So we have the goals and we're gonna ask each of you to identify actions for any goal. And we're gonna do that in a shared Google Doc. Everybody will have editing, everybody already has editing rights to the Google Doc. So no erasing other people's ideas, please. Um, I'll show you how that works in just a minute, but a couple of things to think about with action planning. Um, really important. So we have a lot of really great actions already in the chat roll. You can scroll up, up, up in the actions, and excuse me, in the chat roll and see what they are. You might have new ones that you've jotted down as well. But actions, again, begin with a verb. We're gonna encourage you to be specific and to think in the near to midterm. So like six months to 24 months, but within two years. If you start to get to actions that are three and five and 10 years out, it just gets hard to plan at that phase. So keep it in the near term. We have a lot of different considerations in 2020. So some of your actions might even be specific to COVID or specific to other things that are happening in Salisbury or a new marketing campaign that just kicked off round two in Rowan County. You know, just making things up, but that's an example to think about what is the moment and how to build on things. We encourage you to type in one action per post-it and I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. And we can help enter actions as well. If it's not working for you for some reason, we can actually go into a breakout room and work with you to add actions one by one. I encourage you to write complete sentences. Think about actions you could help with. If you work with an organization or you know of someone who could help realize an action, we encourage you to put that down. And again, one action per, per box. You can tell we really hope for that. So sometimes just some examples, someone might say, you know, we need more farmers. Well, you need more farmers where and in what way and what might they do? So an example, that first bullet on the slide, expand the number of vendors that accept SNAP at the farmer's market. Or hold a health and wellness fair featuring locally grown products. Um, so just think about the where, the what, and the how, and as much detail as you can add in the actions uh, is helpful. So I'm gonna show you a slide of what the action looks like, and then we're actually gonna all jump into the actions together. So here's, where we're headed. Is anybody actually not able to access the Google Doc? And again, it's completely fine if you're not able to. Anybody not able to access the Google Doc? All right, let's go to, all righty, so all of you can see this? And again, anybody not able to access it? Great. So this is what the slides look like after this. They're all the same after this. So this is where we're headed and it's gonna be, it'll make sense here, but just to build on what I just shared for a moment. So each slide, there, each slide has, each goal has two slides with 10 boxes on each. So each goal has 20 boxes total, 10 post-it notes total. What we're gonna ask you to do is to click on a post-it note or text box and, box and write one action on the number post-it and your name. And we'll show you what this looks like in a second. All of you, if you click on this document on your own, this is slide two. So you'll be able to actually, you know, you can look at these directions at any point and you can navigate forward and back, right? I can see a lot of you are in here navigating forward and back. So the slides are goal one, they're always there. You can look at all four. Um, Slide two is the one we're looking at. And then slides three and below are the different goals. So um, as we look at one of these pages, let's look at this one, for example. The steering committee came up with two different ideas for this particular goal. And we put them in here and included the name steering committee. And then there's only one additional action from the steering committee for goal four but you can actually type in any of these. I'm gonna to have to go out of presenter mode for a moment for, for this, exactly, perfect. So all the, the funny animal names that Google puts in there, anonymous dingo started, you know, you can actually start typing things in. Now, what we are gonna ask is 
We'll give everybody a little bit of time to enter these in. You'll have about 10 minutes to enter things in for different slides. We're gonna ask you to put your name in on the slide. If your name, this is not a big deal, but one way to make it a little easier is if your name, first name is at the beginning of the alphabet, start towards one. If your name like Nick is in the middle of the alphabet, you know, grab slide, grab number 10 or 11 or 12. And if your name is Z like Zinnia, I don't think we have any Zinnias, but then you would be closer to action 20, which is slide two. So again, here's goal one. Goal one again. There are a couple extra post-its down there in the bottom. If we run out, you can see goal two has two, goal three, goal four. So just to wrap up and then turn you loose to start adding actions. Um, if someone starts typing in a text box that you are, just move to another one. And if anyone's having technical problems, you know, put it in the chat roll and let us know. After we have about five or 10 minutes for you to add any actions that you see to help make this goal a reality, we're gonna look at the goals one by one as a group. And we're actually gonna ask you to share the actions. So we'll review the actions together as a group. And our team, Will and Darlene and I, will actually be grouping some similar ideas together. And we can add details or revise them if needed. And we'll start to um, see where there may be overlap, like three and five, for example. At the end of this time, you know, and after we review all of them, we'll get a clear sense about what the numbered actions are, because then we'll have a Zoom poll pop up and ask, we'll ask you what you think the top most important 12 actions are across all four goals. So that's where we're headed before the end of this evening. So again, to recap, um, We'll do more actions, new actions, and new prioritization tomorrow. But again, we're going to invite you to add actions across all four goals, two slides per page. Please make sure you add your name, add detail, all those things, verb, short-term, understandable, complete sentence, really, really key important. So imagine your grandmother or your grandson were looking at this. Could they understand what you meant? if they had no knowledge of local food. So make sure it could be understandable by somebody who isn't in the room. And then as you read them, you know, start, start to think about which ones you feel like are the most important. So that's a lot of information. We're gonna jump into it. Are there any questions from folks before we, we hop into it? Any questions from anyone? I was just gonna add, when you put your, when you put your name at the, at the bottom, Try to leave the number uh, in front of your name, by the way, because th that's going to be, we're going to use that number um, with the voting later. Yeah, absolutely. And the voting will actually just say goal one, action one, goal two, action two. So we'll need to keep the Google Doc up with the poll. So again, you can grab the corners of boxes and change them so you can see them side by side. So Alyssa said when she signed out, all the messages were gone. We do have a copy of that. Does anybody, I have actually all the session one chat ideas in a Google Doc. Would you like that in the link? Would anybody like me to pop that in the chat roll now or would that be confusing? Alyssa, did you want me to pop it in maybe? It might be a helpful. <laughs> okay, sure. I'm so sorry. not to confuse people. Oh, no worries at all. The um, what I will actually be sharing the latest is just the session one chat role is, um, is the Google Doc link that I'll, I'll stop sharing, put that in. Any other questions? Is anyone having a hard time accessing the document or figuring out how to navigate it? It's totally fine if you are having a tricky time. So again, you can copy and paste. We really have space for voting for 20 actions for each. So we're gonna try to group ideas where possible. I'm gonna go ahead and put that chat roll in. If anybody wants to go into a breakout room with Will, we can do that to gather your ideas if you're having a hard time navigating. Any questions from anyone? Trickiness, concerns? All right, so we'll just have about five or six minutes of quiet writing. Um, give me a thumbs up on your, under your reactions when you're kind of close to done. So I know when you've entered. And again, take a look at all four goals and then take a look at what actions are a priority to you next. 
Again, I can't get started. What's that, Dottie? Is it, you said you're not able to get started? Yes. So, so Dottie, do I... Do you, go ahead, Dottie. Dottie, do you want to have just a separate meeting with Will for a minute to figure out, yeah. to enter in what your ideas are? That's yeah. totally fine. Anybody yeah. else having a hard time with the document or adding your ideas? All right, let's see. Are you going to make that happen, Will? Uh, yeah, I think Christine's going to about to put us in a meeting. Right. Yeah, I'm going to. Have... Just to let everyone know, because I just got confused as well. The more you type, the lower the number goes. So you just gotta yeah. like backtrack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Christine, are 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 you gonna call us back when it's ready? Yeah, I'll give you about sixty seconds, um, and you should be able to send me a note as well. So I'll give you about five minutes. Um, so Dottie and Will, you should be going to breakout room two now okay <clears throat> all right you may have to accept that now will and daddy looks like they're gone okay great anybody else having a hard time entering things or is it tricky not making sense That's okay My four-year-old son was just with me and said that he would appreciate it if the farmer's market had windows. <laughs> we can enter that. I love it. That's great. <laughs> His idea was so that the food wouldn't get wet. <laughs> That's awesome. Dry food is important. So I just put the session one chat role in the Google Doc link. You don't need to open it if you um, don't want to. It's just if you want to have access. Anyone else having questions? All right, goal one is looking great. So feel free to scroll on down because we're going to want to give each of the goals kind of equal attention in terms of thinking about how to make these goals a reality. And if you have ideas from others, I know Michael, you, for example, maybe have a lot of ideas that you're bringing from farmers and growers. We welcome that as well. If you know of ideas from other people, um, feel free to add those actions in here too. Are we just doing goal number one or all of them? We're actually going to go ahead just for the silent writing all four goals now. Thanks, Taylor, for that question. Oh, okay. And then, we'll, yeah, so all four goals now, and then we're going to review them one by one at a time. Okay, we'll gotcha. So, yeah, so go ahead and hit all four goals now. Good question. Any other questions from folks?
Some great ideas are coming up. Will's back. I think we got, hey yeah, I think we got Daddy set up. All right, great, awesome. Michael's video's on now. You might need to um, end the breakout room just in case she's having a hard time getting out. That's kind of been a thing. Okay, okay. okay thanks. So it'll close in, yeah, just less than a minute. These are good looking actions, folks. Yeah, they're great looking actions. So goal one has a lot of good ideas in it. I know folks are just getting in it. A lot of people are on goal two now. Feel free to jump all the way forward to goal four if you want to. I can't, this is Cindy. Okay. I can't get the Google Doc to go down to goal four. It just hangs right okay. there in goal three. Try hitting escape, Cindy. Okay. And it might be caught. See if you can hit escape and then hit the down arrow. See if that'll work for you. Okay. You can also just tell us actions or put them in the chat roll and we'll enter them for you or do a breakout room. Did that work for you, Cindy? Mm, I'm having trouble getting back to it. Let's see. Hey, Dottie. Hi. Good. Well, I had a lot more to say. Thank you. Good. Do you have a chance to, to say everything you wanted to say? Oh, you're muted, Dottie. I never have that much time. Because you might need in another 24 hours to... If, uh, if folks have are having trouble with the Document, you're welcome, again, to put, you know, goal four, action three, and we'll pop it in for you. Feel free to put things in the chat roll. Folks, been great. We're getting a lot of good ideas in here. Again, start to read through them because we're going to be looking at where things can be combined and prioritized in just a little while, too. You can do more jumping jacks if your energy is getting low or not. Don't. Also, don't stress out if you, sometimes with the works, these workshops, someone will say like, oh, well, so-and-so has like five actions. I only have one, like I'm not doing very well. It, don't, don't get too caught up on trying to make as many actions as possible. Just um, having one really good action is perfectly fine. Um, Cindy, is it working for you now? No. <laughs> Do you want to go into a breakout room with Will for a couple minutes? Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. Awesome. Sure. All right. Oh, need to. Right, you should have to um, accept the invitation. Anybody else having a hard time accessing it?
You're welcome to go back and add additional details too. You're welcome to edit yours if that's helpful. If you see things uh, that you want to add, feel free. All right, so we'll give it just a couple more minutes and then we'll start taking a look at them one by one. Who's back? They get it out. Yay. Awesome. Did you end up entering the actions or did you get it figured out with Cindy? Uh, Cindy I'm figured it out. It. Yeah. We don't okay. we don't know what we did. Cindy, but can you hear us? Okay. We did something and it worked. Started working, so awesome. Amy stretching. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. So maybe another 30 seconds and then we'll take a look at the goals one by one. Folks are adding a lot of great ideas. Oh, don't tell me it's doing that again. That was it doing it again? Yes, yeah, doing it again. I got halfway through my item and it won't get up far enough for me to even put my name in there. Well, hold on. You, what, 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 which one are you on? Number eight of goal four. So you're anonymous dingo. Yeah. Well, I can't see it, but I have a feeling that's who it is. Okay. I'm done with this. <laughs> I'm coming ah, back. Now. All right. Indeed. Okay. All right, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and do a screen share again. And so, here we go. Cindy, I, I can finish your thought. You said provide fresh uh, produce to seniors who cannot travel to the to the farmer's market. Good farmer's market. Okay. I'll, I'll finish the thought for you. Thank you. Great. Good teamwork. There you go. Alrighty. So, do folks need more time? Does anybody need more time to enter can, in ideas? If you also want to put an action in the chat box, if you're having a hard time, I, I, I can put it in a box for you. If you're having, if that's Absolutely. easier, if you're having a hard time with it, go ahead and put in the chat box. I'll grab that into a copy and I'll paste it in for you. Great. That's, so. um, that's no problem. All right. So we're going to go through uh, each goal, you know, about, you know, seven or eight minutes per goal. And we're going to start with goal one. And I'm going to invite the folks who have said the goal to share it. If there are any clarifying questions that you have, if you're saying, I'm not totally sure what that means, can you help me understand it? Then, you know, feel free to add more details and we can actually include more details. Darlene and Will and I are gonna be keeping an eye out for actions that might seem similar. 
So we might put after your name another number if they're similar. Um, and that's just going to help us with grouping as we move forward, but we'll keep them distinct actions. So when you share your action, you know, just share the idea and remember that we have four goals to get through um, before we do prioritization uh, in about half an hour or so. Any questions about process from anybody? Are you so excited? Can you not wait to talk about the actions? I hope so, because here we are getting ready to roll up the actions. Cool. And folks can see my screen okay? Good? Yes. All right, great. Always helpful to hear. All right, so let's start with goal one. Um, who would like to share their action? If you want to just go ahead and, and say what number it is so we're all looking at it, that would be great. Who would like to start out? I will. <laughs> go, Carol. Um, well, first of all, I will say that um, at one point, the farmer's market did have a marketing committee. Um, Amy was on it. I was on it, um, and there was a baker, and we did have a fair amount of activities, but um, this year looks very different because of COVID. Um, mm -hmm. We did not schedule any extra activities because we were promoting social distancing. So um, some of these things are not, um, ideas are not new to the farmer's market. But anyway, um, I did number six and seven, um, provide incentives for farmers to grow produce in fall and winter months, October through March. Um, Michael Fine has been trying to talk some farmers into it, but come October, we'll probably go down to one produce vendor, maybe two, because um, the big farms stop. Um, Corral Farms, Twin Oaks, and Miller, they, they're done. In fact, they're pretty much done right now. Um, they have very few things left. And they're not interested in growing in the winter. Um, some of them have guest workers from other countries, and they can only uh, work maybe 10 months out of the year. So they work March through the end of September, uh, mid-October. And you know some of the things like I know in the end of September, the beginning of October, um, a lot of the strawberry farmers are putting down their strawberry plants and they're getting ready for the spring. So um, that's another reason why they don't plant in the fall. So we do need more farmers here in Rowan County that grow winter vegetables that have the hoop houses or the cold frames, whatever you want to call it, uh, we're very limited in what mm -hmm. kind of produce we have here in the winter time. Uh, can I add to that? A farmer told me the other day that he doesn't grow anything for the winter because he thinks there's not a market for it. So it's kind of that chicken and egg, you know. Right. Um, so there's a need to demonstrate the need as well for the produce. Sorry, Carol, the interview. Is that captured anywhere? Is you know, demonstrating you know, demand in the winter months? Has anybody put an action down for that or do we need to add one? Um, well, the farmer's market has talked about staying open year round. There are a handful of vendors that would like to do that. Um, I don't know if there is an action anywhere and um, that's something that's gonna have to come right from the farmers because yeah, um, I noticed there was another comment that said, ask the farmers to open more than one day. And um, I, Amy could probably um, back me up, but that's not going to happen because the farmers aren't interested in doing that. No, they, that one time they had a Wednesday um, market and in the spring and summer, oh, well, yeah, spring and summer, and the bang is just not worth the buck. Um, I, you know, people just aren't coming out on the Wednesday markets to make it worth their time. I think another thing with a winter market, um, it's a little harder for someone who does not cook or hasn't been around people who cook to know how to prepare some of the winter crops. Right. versus you know you know how to make a salad or to you know Sweet hopefully boil water for corn or 
cut a, a watermelon up. That's one of the things that we find with um, some of our clientele in some of the younger generation, generational um, youth is they just, it, it's nothing that they really desire to find out about and they really haven't been introduced to. So that's another thing is I think people are a little bit hesitant to purchase that type of crop mm. or produce. That's helpful. So great conversation um, across the board. Um, we're going to have a chance also in the small groups tomorrow to do a deep dive. I do want to make sure we have a chance to hear from everybody about the action. So um, we're going to just keep the conversation a little bit quicker in terms of sharing what the actions are and then have time tomorrow to go on a deeper dive on what the actions are. So just a quick heads up to make sure we get a chance to hear from everybody. Taylor, you were getting ready to share something. What did you want to share? Um, I was just going to ask about their, uh, action, but I can continue on with mine if you'd like. No, feel free to go ahead and, uh, and ask about it and then go ahead and, and share what your okay. action is. I was just going to ask, were you all, um, talking about crops that can be grown in the winter or equipment that'll allow you to grow things inside? Um, a little bit of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay because i've really been getting into like growing things with um led lights and things like that and vertical farming and hydroponics and i feel like that could be you know something that would be of use to salisbury yes. i don't know that it, it takes money right right of course <laughs> yeah great okay right. well, mine is number 11 Can you see yes. it now? Yes. Um, so I said make Salisbury Farmers Market inclusive and inviting for BIPOC, which is Black, Indigenous, and people of color, to participate and become vendors for the market and or store that uh, may happen downtown. Um, that way, um, there's inclusivity. No one's feeling left out. Um, voices are being heard. Um, I do know that sometimes cities hold uh, specific farmers markets and um, like the black farmers market that happened in Durham over the summer. I went to that and I really enjoyed wow. it. I know that we, hmm, how do I wear this? I know that we want to um, come together more, but um, just realistically speaking, people feel more comfortable uh, serving to their own communities. So if we wanted to create one specific for those communities, then that could happen too. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Taylor. I really appreciate that idea. No problem. And uh, we would be delighted to have persons coming. As far as we can tell, they're almost, I don't know, Michael may know, I don't know of any persons of color who are farmers uh, in this area. Michael, do you know? Not that are operating, and op I think there are plenty would be my would be my answer. Um, I don't know if it's, you know, it's a narrow view to look at the farms that are retail at a farmer's market. There's a lot of farms that are open for business that they don't choose to, to be shown through the farmer's market platform. Um, gotcha. I know it's definitely not a large percentage, but I think that not knowing many people in all the communities is our Achilles heel. But once Correct. we once, I mean, once we get to know more people, I, I do, I think there's more going on out there than we know. Just maybe not at a market level, maybe mm -hmm. not at a, um, maybe it's more in the community and not at a farmer's market. What is Chantel's far, uh, farm? I know she sells at the farmer's market and it's, a, it's me, I believe, but I don't know what farm she represents. That's right. Um, Chantel, she runs a farm called Off Grid in Color. Yeah, and, I got to meet her over the summer. She's really nice. Yeah, yeah she's great. And she's super. She's a super extraordinarily great networker. Oh, and um, I think that she's linked up um, just more on a grassroots organic level. She's linked up with some farmers in the um, Chatham County area. Yeah. And I want to say that a lot more of her operations based based out of that area. Yes, <laughs> she, she okay. has access to markets, you know, that's that area has a little bit of a pool. Um, so she could be a good connection to, you know, 
talk more with if she knows of any farmers out here who are interested. She has moved her operation to Pittsburgh mm. um, and she comes to the market once a month now. Okay. There's also uh, Carol or Michael, do y'all know um, Emmanuel Hayden? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been to his farm before. Does he do the market? I don't no. think so. I think he, he's a beginner, and I, but I think he's going to be quickly on his way to being at a market level. Uh, right now, the farmer's market is accepting any, um, pretty much anybody who applies to come be a vendor. And do anything. As long as they have yeah. authentic product. There's right. still a vetting yeah. of authenticity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. The, the criteria is you have to grow, what is it, at least 75%, Michael? Mm-hmm. I'll go back and check the regulations. You know, it's like a lot of markets. It'll it'll start with um, fifty percent in the shoulder seasons, a hundred percent in peak season. Right. And I see a lot of farmers markets do that. Um, that are kind of at our level as far as participation. But then as they grow, growers who are growing a hundred percent tend to fill in those gaps. So over time, some of those markets more from like a fifty-fifty to a hundred percent but they have to grow in product to replace that 50%. Right. So I, I think that happens organically as the market grows. Right. Well, um, there are a, a few Latino um, vendors at the, at the web flea market, but they don't grow their own produce. They just go down to the food hub and buy it from the wholesalers. So that's, you know, that's a problem with the, with the farmer's market is you have to grow your own. Mm -hmm. you, you have to be the chief producer. That's helpful. So, is that, that you're, can, ahead, so what you're saying is 50% is 50% of the crop you bring. It has to be from your own. Yes. Yep. Yes. And that's only in the, that's only in the spring and fall in the summer. It, the number goes up to maybe 75 or 85. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's a, I'll just have to check the, the rules, but it's, it's like Carol's saying. And even out of the 50% in the shoulder seasons, it still all has to be local. And the bylaws probably say North Carolina. Taylor, I was going to ask. It needs to be marked if it's not local. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Taylor, I was going to ask, do you know the specific name of the market in Durham? It's called the it's called the um, Black Farmers Market. I thought. Yeah, I think it's already called that. I can look it up on Facebook and put it in the group chat. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Just okay. so I can do some research on it. So I'm capturing just a couple names under what would be Action 18, as I'm sure all of you can see. Um, if you correct want to correct any of those names, feel free. So this is going to be really helpful for group one as we dig into this tomorrow to think about how to actually make some of these actions a reality. When we prioritize, if the actions don't make it to the top, the group tomorrow will still be able to see them and the group may actually reprioritize them. So I just, this is just our initial prioritization from the evening large group. So let's go back and we're just going to roll through these one at a time um, and flag, you know, where there's going to need to be additional information gathering. Very often, you know, the reasons also we have calls four, five, and six are to do a deep dive on these actions as well. So if additional needs to be gathered, we can identify that. So um, the steering committee came up with one and two, expand the downtown farmer's market with a new food cooperative and year-round market store that offers access to healthy food and local products. And some folks have said we need to rephrase that. So that's something we can definitely do, especially in our large or small groups tomorrow. The second one, and then we'll go into action three, is develop market strategies for the market connect with downtown arts, retail, and restaurant opportunities. So we'll start to see some overlap with some of these different actions. Um, Cindy, let's go to you for number three. Do you wanna share your action for number three? Host the farmer's market on additional days and times. I know that's an issue, but if we want restaurants to use farmer's market products, they'll have to be able to get them in the middle of the week because if you only host a farmer's market on Saturday and the best restaurants that use local produce or farm to table are only open on Saturday, uh, usually Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights, then they're not going to come on Saturday to get their produce. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks, Cindy. 
So a lot of these we could, so think of this as our initial round of information gathering and we're gonna again do another round. So I know all of these we can have a lot of deep discussion about. We're gonna keep rolling right now so we can hear from everybody. But if you really do have a clarifying question, if you say, I'm just not sure what that person means, then just jump in. And, or if you have a key piece of information, pop it in the chat roll. That's gonna be the easiest place to keep um, additional ideas of folks rolling, which is, is key. Um, all right, Amy, number four. Um, make sure that transportation is an issue. And the reason why I was putting this down is um, our WIC clients receive vouchers, but for some reason, um, they, they share with our nutritionists that they are interested in receiving them, but they do not use them. And so we are trying to figure out what the gap is. And I apologize, but it, like many times, um, being an agency or organization, you think you have the answer or um, it's a great location. But I honestly don't know if the farmer's market is, uh, is on the public transportation route right now and or if it is running because of COVID. So that may be something that could be an easy fix or it just may be a lot of marketing to let our clients and everyone else who uses public transportation to know that it is accessible. Great, that's key. Good questions, Amy. All right, um, Rafaela, number five. Have Rafaela. Hey, can you hear me? Yep. Kind of. Ah, yes. Can you hear me? Kind of. Yeah. Feel free to try oh, again, Rafaela, no, and I'll. I'll we'll, go ahead. Raphael, I'm going to share yours for you, but I appreciate you making the effort. Um, so Raphael's was to provide incentives, uh, incentives in targeting new producers and promote farmers markets at communities such as schools and churches. So Raphael, thanks for that idea. Carol, let's see, you've shared six. How about number seven? Carol, do you want to share that one? Um, right now, the farmer does not accept EBT. Um, okay. Amy and I have been trying to facilitate and encourage them. Um, I think what happens is once the season starts, they're so overwhelmed and busy. Um, but that is something that Amy and I are going to work on this winter, try to get them signed up for. Great. Awesome. Thanks, Carol. That's key information. All right, Hannah, number eight and number nine. Sure. Yeah, for mine, I was thinking about kind of the physical footprint and the site design of the market how it could be expanded to include um, additional vendors, food trucks, musicians, more activities that make it more into a festival atmosphere. And then also inspired by Pikeville, looking at ways that we can make sure that our Main Street redesign um, both connects and then kind of creates spaces for people to enjoy local food. <laughs> awesome. Hey, Pikeville. Cool. Thanks, Hannah. All right, Christine, number 10. Yeah, sorry, I'm multitasking this evening. Um, no problem. I was just um, saying, you know, making EBT formerly food stamps as a payment option um, so that anyone, if they're receiving that benefit, would have access to the farmer's market, just like cash paying customers. Awesome. So would folks say that seven and 10 are the same? Yeah. Seven? Pretty Anybody? Much, yeah. yeah. Christine and Carol, any concern with you if we group those together? Not at all. All right, so um, I think what, yeah, go ahead. Um, could it be like a prerequisite, I guess, um, in order to join the farmer's market, you have to have that payment option available for people? I don't know if that would be too Amy, much. you want to take that one? <laughs> it's just a question that I just wanted to throw out there for you to think on. You don't have to answer it right now. <laughs> Once Carol and I look into it a little bit more, it's not an easy just sign a paper or something mm -hmm. um, and see what it consists of. Maybe we could we could 
offer that suggestion but right now i don't okay. i don't know enough about it to gotcha. know exactly how how much of an undertaking that would be okay yeah. but good, good idea yeah. Yeah, it is a good awesome. idea. <laughs> and there are several grants out there available to the farmers in order yeah, to help them get the startup costs. Right. Oh, well, or to buy the machines. That. Yeah, there are. Yeah. Um, uh, that's, I, I will say that we definitely need um, more community members on the Farmers Market Board because um, at, right now there's like... Um, maybe 14 or 15 people on the board and all but like two or three are farmers. So, um, you know, if, if there are volunteers that are willing to take on some of these tasks, I think they would be more open to it. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest maybe creating like an internship around that. It may not be paid, but it, it'll be something and you, you have more people to help. Um, yeah. that's a good idea because I do that <laughs> it's, it's not a board that meets regularly mm -hmm. um, it's not the, you know the, they may meet five times between January and, and April and then they'll meet twice the rest of the year so um, gotcha. it, it may be something in like an internship with Michael Fine who's who is the cooperative extension who might be able to facilitate a, that a little bit better. Right. Okay. So this is great. I mean, we're already doing, you know, you're seeing, seeing what the action plan looks like. I mean, that is what the conversation looks like to move an idea forward and to play something out. So um, <laughs> Hannah has to go at that time. That's awesome. Totally the realities of uh, community. And we are going to actually get everybody out of here at eight. So with that being said, we're going to need to start moving a little bit faster and save these deeper dive conversations for the large amount of time that we have tomorrow for them. So I'm going to ask folks for your permission. We are going to have like 20 seconds per action moving forward because in about 15 minutes, we're going to prioritize. Is that okay with everybody? If we, if we move at that speed to get us out of here at eight, thumbs up. We're good with that. Any concerns with that from anybody? All right, cool. So the comments are important, but I encourage you to put them in the chat roll so we can, as a team, we're going to transcribe things tomorrow morning and pull everything together. Um, but I want to get us to the prioritization. So Taylor shared 11. Thank you. Cindy, have you shared 12 yet? We still have Cindy. Offer discount coupons for the farmer's market to folks who live in the downtown area. Awesome. Cool. Any questions on that one? All right, Amy, 13. Um, I encourage our local restaurants, especially ones downtown, to purchase their produce from the market. Um, and then they can uh, possibly promote or feature these items like on like a table chant on their tables so people would know where they got their ingredients awesome. so that they could be a patron of the mar market as well. Great, awesome. Thanks, Amy. Who has 14 and 15? I did. Awesome, Daddy. You want to share uh, those? We just need to promote more. We normally do posters, but, but we, they need to get out to a much, much broader uh, distribution than we've been doing. Um, and then 15 was, um, I personally think that it's a long way from downtown, because I think of downtown as around the square downtown to the farmer's market and to figure out some way to connect the farmer's market with downtown signage or something. Great, thanks Sunny, great ideas. And I love these offers. People are already offering to do stuff in the chat roll. You're already doing what we ask you to do in session four. Great modeling everybody, so cool. All right, we have two left for goal one and then we're rolling on to goal two. Sasha, 16. Can you hear me? Yep. Great. I wanted to offer architectural technical assistance if it's necessary, if you decide that you, your market is growing or you're looking at other locations or anything of the sort into the future, please feel free to reach out to me or my colleague, Ron Batcher. I would be more than willing to help you out. And as an LFLP community, you get first priority. Awesome. 
Thanks, Sasha. That's great. So even if that's not prioritized, that resource is still available to you moving forward. So that's such a great uh, tool. Thanks, Sasha. All right, Alyssa, 17. Um, I put host a local food restaurant event at the new Bell Tower Green. Example is Restaurant Week in Charlotte. I haven't actually been to the one where you can like go around and taste different vendors or local farmers or local restaurants, but I thought with the new park coming, and I know LaToya needs more events to possibly plan in the future. Um, it, I just thought it might be a neat idea to, to, to help promote um, this. Okay, great, awesome. So it looks like we're, we're doing pretty good actually when I look ahead at some of the goals. So thanks for that, um, Alyssa. The next one is just notes. So they're just notes that I captured um, from today. So let's move on to goal two and we're gonna keep rolling through them pretty quick. So be ready for your number. So Amy, number one. Um, find a way to promote the Salisbury Farmer's Market um, without, without them having to be in charge of the marketing. I don't know if it's through tourism or however, but a large amount of their budget is used for marketing and they don't have a big, a big budget. Okay, that's helpful. All right, Taylor, number two. Um, I just said create a program to supply local institutions with food. I don't know how that would work, but it was just something to put out there. And mm -hmm. I also said create resources slash funding for up and coming farmers just so they have that support. Awesome. Thanks, Taylor. Appreciate it. All right, Carol, four. Uh, providing an employee who acts as a sales rep for local produce and oversees the orders, delivery, and customer feedback to res local restaurants. Um, mm -hmm. Most of the farmers I know either are working very hard um, during the season and or have a second, you know, a primary job, and they are not able to do um you know visit different restaurants and tell them what they have in in season there's a program in charlotte that um one of our farmers participates in where they he every friday he sends um a list of what he's going to have available and the chef's order and then the um this company comes and picks up um at the farm and, okay. and it, it's very little work for him. And that kind of thing farmers are interested in. They don't have time to be doing deliveries or reaching out to restaurant uh, chefs and things like that. Okay, thanks, Carol. And the next one? Um, I said to ask local chefs to demonstrate cooking at the market um, as a public service, but also as an advertisement for their restaurants or catering. Great, okay, great, thanks, Carol. Latoya, is that you for number six? Yes. My um, probably should go um, up to go one, but create local food farm guide and create new innovative marketing strategies. So mm -hmm. but that could probably combine in with um, one of the actions in goal one. Okay. Do you think it's a new one or should it be... Um it's um, the point that Dottie hit on. Um, I think she had mentioned a little bit of about marketing and signage. The one fifteen here about marketing and signage. Does that look like the right one? Yeah. Awesome. So we're going to keep that as fifteen um, and call that fifteen B. And then Dottie, yours is still there too. All right. That work for folks? You can see that that's 15 combined. Alrighty, moving on back to goal two. Um, Rafaela, I'm going to share yours since your audio is hard to hear. No problem. Partner with local, state, and federal partners supporting local foods, local places to leverage economic opportunities. Thanks, Rafaela, for that. I think Hannah has had to put kiddos to bed. Hannah, are you still on? All right, so Hannah's is a creative space to create and sell value out of products, awesome. And nine, partner with local restaurant owners for a local food week, connect and build into more permanent menu solutions. So a lot I of- I just wanna add what I, what I had shared is essentially food week. <laughs> okay, great. So, so I wonder- Is yours- um, The one I had shared in number one, I'm wondering if they should 
if we should just keep both or if, I don't know. <laughs> Well, that's a good, I would leave them separate for right now since they're across different goals because it may be something that the different groups tomorrow do consider separately, if that sounds okay with you. Alyssa, yeah. is that good with you? All right, yeah. cool. <laughs> Hannah's not here to speak up, so we'll leave that one here for now. Um, so let's see here. All righty. Whose is this first one? Encourage farmer to grow special foods for our numerous ethnic restaurants. Dottie, there we go. There we go. Um, we have a number of ethnic restaurants here that use food that is not grown locally, but it seems to me that if, if the farmers would know what they needed and it would grow here, they could do that. And I think okay. there's a market with all of our different various uh, ethnic restaurants here. Great. Thanks, I love Daddy. that. Yeah. Appreciate that, Daddy. All right, Nick, you've had some food. You're up for 12 and 13 in goal two. Yes, some zucchini cakes and farro and broccoli. Yummy to Ooh. my tummy. Um, just partnered with Livingstone to create a thriving co-op just downtown like we've talked. Uh, food, uh, kitchen, canning program, something um, to help to do the next step with the food. Awesome. And 13? Yeah, um, I think uh, Taylor and some others kind of touched on this, so maybe it needs to be moved. I'm just actively recruiting and encourage diverse vendors, farmers, and producers. Great. So that one was for goal one. I'm going to encourage us to leave this in here since it's a separate goal for goal two. Does that sound good to you, Nick? And to others? Yeah. Thumbs up? Looking good? All right, cool. Rolling on to goal three, we're, we're on a streak here. Let's keep it going. Cindy, action one, goal three. Host Saturday walk runs that begin and end at the farmer's market. Fun, I love that. I see some heads nodding. Great. Alyssa, two. Um, new bike rack installed near existing farmer's market and other places promoting local foods. We actually have four bike racks um, that came in that we need to install and two that we're gonna move and one I marked out to put at the farmer's market. So I'm kind of cheating here, <laughs> okay. um, but I still think it's worth putting on there in case there are other places that people can point out and we can add it to our map list for future spots. Awesome. Thanks. Are those the ones that we thank Amy Smith for maybe? Yes. They are. Sorry. I just had to put that in there. <laughs> I didn't realize. Thank you, Amy. I have a map and they're about ready to be installed. <laughs> awesome. Cool. All right. Great. Um, Amy is not. There's Amy. Amy, how about number three? Goal three. You want to read? Allow the farmer's market to be open during city hosted events such as Chiron Festival. And this may have changed, but I know when we were in our former location that it was sort of like hurry up, do it in the morning, and then you didn't have the option of being open because um, the festival had that area. So maybe once COVID goes away and we have the Chihuahua Festival again, that may be something we can talk about. Okay, great. You have some timing considerations there. Cool. All right, who's this goal or action four? Connect with downtown businesses and restaurants such as Heart of Salisbury. Whose action is that? If no one speaks up, I could talk about Heart of Salisbury. <laughs> that yeah. was mine, um, but Alyssa, you're more than welcome to talk about Heart of Salisbury. No, you got it, Latoya. Um, I just think it would be great to partner with Heart of Salisbury, with Yanni there. Um, she has the kitchen. She's all about healthy foods, uh, local produce. Um, healthy activities, health awareness. I mean, there's so much you can say. Um, and with her new facility or her new um, building and the work she's put behind it, I think that will be a great opportunity to connect and work with her um, in this sense. Awesome. Great. Carol, you're up for the next three. And we don't actually have any on the next page for goal three. So if you hit those next three, then we'll get the rest and then head on to goal four. So Carol, over to you. Um, well, one, the first one was to invite local agencies to offer screenings, blood pressure checks, and other community services. Um, 
and then you could have um, uh, the Red Cross there to do blood, or you could have the mammogram, <clears throat> mobile, whatever. That would be a good promotion of healthy events. Um, you could enlist health and nutrition professionals to offer healthy cooking and recipes at the market. In previous years, we've had um, toy uh, degree from Cooperative Extension do cooking demonstrations. And at one point, the nutritionist at Novant was coming and doing those. Um, and uh, provide an opportunity for farmers, local chefs, and the public to provide recipes to compile into a cookbook. And I think that would take a year because I would want it to be seasonal to um, address all of the different seasonal produce. Awesome, I love that. And this one adds, oh, seasonal. Well, maybe not actually. All right, Nick, you're up. Uh, we are, our new master plan talks about us redoing our Greenway plan and adding, making it more destination um, centric, uh, expanding the Greenway plan and to historical cultural spots, but also places like the farmer's market. Great, thank you. Taylor Nine. Mine's very similar to what Carol has said. So you can combine, I guess, nine and six. Perfect. So I'm gonna make this 60. You are, all of you, professionals at this it seems like already which is great making yeah. our job easy yeah. um all right so raffaella we're having a little hard time hearing you so i'm just going to share yours i hope you don't mind increase uh, connectivity across community assets identified through local foods local places so thanks for that so again we don't have any in goal three the second one so let's move on to goal four and then we will do our first round of prioritization so steering committee had come up with develop opportunities for year-round local healthy food production and distribution we've heard some actions across the other goals um, which makes sense so this might be hit in multiple ways so nick how about number two continue to uh identify um key access points for either I'm sure Dottie's group and other groups are doing this, but just food distribution places are, again, those corner stores that she's talked about. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, yeah, so increasing those opportunities. Great, cool. Amy, three. Uh, just continue to brainstorm um, ways to increase uh, the clients to use our vouchers at the market. And also talk to our state, which I don't know if Michael uh, has any more control of this than we do at the health department, but they usually don't issue the uh, WIC vouchers until end of Ju June or beginning of July. So a lot of our clients, uh, especially those that um, have limited access, um, don't have access to the earlier crops in the season. If, if, if anybody, if any of our um, consultants can help with that, that is really a, uh, a problem because the farmer's market opens in mid-May. They don't get these vouchers until June or July. It, it, it really sometimes, doesn't make Dottie, any depending sense. On, yeah, sometimes the market opens as early as uh, mid-April. Yeah. Sure, sure. For strawberries yeah. and things. Yeah. Right. And cold, colder crops. Great points. So we can think about in other communities with the case studies, if that's been addressed in any other communities and ask the team, um, but that's a good question and a big challenge across the board. So in the interest of time, I'm gonna ask folks to read um, the rest of the actions on goal four now on your own for a moment and goal five and then, excuse me, goal, uh, the second page of goal four, and then just see if anyone has questions. So does anyone have questions about actions four through 10 on the first page or 11 through 13 on the second page. Any of the actions not make sense to you? Five and 10 could be combined. Which ones? Five and 10. Mm -hmm. Any concerns? Well, Hannah's not on, does it look like any reason those should not be combined to anybody? No, I think that's the same idea. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Great. And uh, my number four can kind of go with one just and 
I'm a, a good example of this. I usually work on Saturdays, or I used to before I lost this job due to COVID. But um, so I wasn't able to attend the market. But something like a Simply Good, or something downtown that would be um, a sort of co-op store. Um, mm -hmm. And I know um, talking with a couple different people about um, opening up a space downtown um, that one wants to do aquaponics. But uh, I'm also on the board of Beacon Hall. Sorry, I'm tugged. But Beacon Hall, um, the director rezoned the property as an urban farm. And there used oh. to be greenhouses there. He wants to build up from the original greenhouses and have a, a big farm there. And um, it also has two big coolers in the warehouse to store things. Oh, that's so that's cool. something that probably, you know, a year or two down the road, but that's conversations being had. So. Ashley, yeah. did you mark it on the map? I should have put Beacon Hall. That's awesome. I haven't yet. Um, I've got some more to add. So. Yeah. yeah, please do. Yeah. Do we need to add that to action one about Beacon Hall specifically, or is that not really something that needs to be added there? I'm, I'm not sure the time frame on that. Sure. So. It's not in the downtown. Yeah, yeah it's okay. not exactly downtown either. Um, I would like to talk about Taylor's proposal for number nine, because um, I think that when you are talking about food insecure areas, you do need to involve the community. You can't just decide as a group that, that this is going to be best for this community, so we're going to do this. Yeah. You need to um, ask them what they want and what what kind of services they want, what they want to see in their community um, and involve them in the decision making. Right. And I don't know how easy it is uh, to identify these persons, but whoever is like the, the neighborhood leaders or I don't know, people who look out for those certain communities, if we could get in touch with them somehow. I know not all neighborhoods are um, as safe to go in as by yourself or whatever. So I don't know, just finding a way to really get to the root of the issues by talking to the actual people who are, you know, undergoing food insecurity and things like that. Right. And I think yeah. there's some groups you could tap into. Um, I know that with the uh, Salisbury Housing Authority, they hold monthly community, community oh. in each one of their complexes. Okay. So um, there's different, and there's some of the faith-based um, communities work actively in those areas, so they might be able to help with that too. In our parks department, we have facilities all throughout the city, and we, like Weston Pride meets at our facilities over at Miller Center, so, um, so yeah, we could be a catalyst for that as well. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, good ideas. All right, we're getting ready to do it. Um, just our first initial prioritization. Are there any questions about the rest of the actions from goal four from anyone? All right, so this is just giving us, this is just kind of a quick temperature take. That, that means all the more right now, our kids get a temperature take, their temperature take it every single morning before school right now. Um, we're just getting a quick snapshot about where each of you are with these actions. In the small groups tomorrow, there'll be time for discussion and reprioritization, and we will have the prioritized actions and then a list of all the actions available to each of the small groups tomorrow. So this is just kind of an initial brush. The poll, um, you know, is going to be lengthy. It's going to look lengthy. So you're going to need to keep the Google Doc open and scroll back and forth on your own between one and two and three and four, the goals to be able to vote in the poll. If it doesn't work for you for some reason, just put in the chat roll which ones are the greatest priority. So everybody is going to get 12 votes. It's on our system. So we're just asking you to select 12 actions spread out across the goals that at an initial level you feel like are the most important. Um, and again, you could just put them in the chat roll. You might say goal four, 12, 13, 15. Goal three, 
one five seven nine, and then we will tally those ourselves. You so, want to um, now, not tomorrow. What's that? This is now, not tomorrow. This is now for these actions for the first prioritization, and then we'll do it in small group study per goal tomorrow for more in-depth conversation. Does that make sense? And how many, I thought this was for tomorrow. Um, how many? 12, everybody gets 12 votes. And okay. you're gonna see the, you're gonna need to again, scroll back and forth on your own to see which one they are. Um, it's just gonna generically have them. So everyone should be able to see the poll now. I know we're almost at eight and this is a lot to ask, but it should just take a few minutes. So are there any questions about what I'm asking anyone to do? If anyone's having trouble, again, feel free to put your priorities in the chat roll and then we'll wrap up after this. If anyone's having trouble, just let us know. The question, one thing I should let you know is the question goal one is the first 10 actions is question one. Question two, because of the way Zoom polls work, goal two, excuse me, the second question is goal one, part B. Does that make sense? Is that too much for this time of the evening? <laughs> yes. Honestly, that's yes. easy. It is too much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, another option, would it be better just... So a couple of things here, we can do a few things. You might say, you know, we don't want to prioritize yet. Let's just do it in the small groups tomorrow morning. Or yeah. you can put your ideas in the chat roll. Would it be better to anybody want to do the poll right now? No. Oh, no. Or could we I think that way we can meet? include more people tomorrow. Yeah, that makes sense. That's, there was another could we idea. do it maybe at 2.30? Or do we have the Zoom just from 3 to... Tomorrow is, it's, it's three to five and six to eight, but you know, there's no reason to be honest with you. We can't um, update the polls with the specific actions and even start out with this in the large group tomorrow. The poll itself, once you see it, isn't, you know, it's not that tricky to see. So we can pull it together to get rolling at three o'clock with the names of the actions in here and then go into the small groups. Would that be a better approach for folks? Yes. Yes, yes. yes. Okay, please. Awesome. <laughs> cool. Well, I will say across the board for this session, you know, you've done everything that we were hoping you would do, but even more. You have shared actions. You've been thoughtful about them. You've combined actions. You've thought about who needs to be included, what a time frame might be. You've connected back to social pinpoint and the mapping. You've thought about who's not present in the group. And to be honest, it's okay if we don't do this first round of prioritization because we'll be doing it in the small groups tomorrow. So I'm gonna end this poll. I um, appreciate your candid feedback there. It's time to uh, wrap up. So, um, here we are with our wrap up from this goal. Um, we will have, we'll put these in the chat roll tomorrow, but um, Darlene, do you wanna mention what the surveys are real quick? I will real, real quick. I know everyone's tired, um, but what we'd like to do is get feedback on the workshop to make sure that um, the workshop is flowing the way you designed, that the engagement is there, that you are feeling heard and represented. And they are anonymous, but it helps us to get feedback on how to improve our workshops. Now, I will say we've had to pivot this year. And so right now the workshop is set up to um, be evaluated based upon a face-to-face -face meeting where we will be there together for two days. So there may be some questions in there that may not um, make sense for you to answer right now, and it's okay to skip over those. But when you get a chance, if you could please go in and um, conduct that survey or just take a couple of minutes, and we'll have another one for tomorrow. There are two separate ones, if you could do that. Um, so that's tomorrow. So I appreciate you taking that. Even if it's not tonight, I know everyone's tired. Yeah. Um, and that we'll both of in an email? Yep, we can send these out in an email too, sure. So um, we will um, pick back up tomorrow at three o'clock, uh, same sign in tomorrow. 
Um, we won't leave the Zoom open overnight because we want all of you to go to bed, but we have an exciting session tomorrow and, and really all of our session tomorrow will be a deep dive around the actions and the details and how to make these goals and actions a reality. So bring your ideas, bring your resources with your brains. Anything before we wrap up today, anybody? Yes. Anything? Um, I was wondering how could I contact whoever um, is a part of Meals on Wheels? Oh, great question. So Taylor, I think Cindy put her info in the chat roll um, earlier. Oh, okay. And in just a minute, we'll pop it in the chat roll again. Will, can you find that in the chat roll and pop, put it in the most recent one for Taylor right now, please? That would be great. Good question. Anything else? Anybody else have any questions? So great work everyone today, really tremendous across the board, an incredible conversation and action. We really look forward to seeing you at three tomorrow. We'll stay on just for a few more minutes. If anyone has any questions or feedback, we welcome it and hope everybody gets a great uh, rest tonight. So thanks everybody, take care. Thank have, you. Everybody, Thank you, care. have a good evening. Thanks, you too, bye-bye. All right, did that go in yet, Will? You're muted, friend. Oops. <clears throat> I was trying to find the Meals on Wheels information in here. Yeah, it was just the beginning of today. Her name's Cindy Fink. Oh, there it is. I just found it. Yeah, 704. Okay. There you go, Taylor. It just came up in the chat roll as the most recent item. 704. Six three three zero three five two. That's Cindy Fink. And Cindy's still on the line. Cindy, is there anything else you want to add to that? Nope. I'm here if you need anything, though. Okay. Thank you so much. I'll be in um, touch with you soon. Great. Thank you. Yep. Awesome. Good night, guys. Good night. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Take See you guys tomorrow. Bye. Thank you. Appreciate it. All righty. Nick, and anybody who's still on the line, any feedback you want to share? Any ideas? I know we're getting late. No, I don't want to keep you all because you guys, you all been working hard on this, but just good job. I think, uh, you know, you guys were able to uh, stoke some enthusiasm and I think there was great conversation and, you know, and I, we've told you all as a committee, like our um, worry with this format, but I think it's worked. I mean, obviously in the beginning, people are like feeling everything out and not wanting to say anything or, you know, but uh, good job. Cool, thanks. It was a great conversation around the actions and people, you know, just so thoughtful. I feel like um, that doesn't always happen, you know, in terms of people really starting to think about how to make the actions a reality just in groups in general. So that was a, a really great conversation. And to be honest, the prioritization is a large group is duplicative of the, what we'll do as a small group. So it's totally fine that we didn't get to that large group prioritization. It's a good experiment. Yeah. And one more quick thing, um, Will or Darlene, whoever else was at the recent one, maybe in Arkansas? Um, I was in Arkansas with Darlene in Russellville. Is that what you're thinking mm -hmm. of? Maybe, or I know Will was gonna do one or maybe all of you that did one was, how was it with people signing up and then the actual showing up? I mean, it seemed like our list was, obviously our list was longer than who participated or showed up, but who knows, they could just be coming tomorrow. I don't know. Yeah. For session one, we had, we had 23 people, not, not counting myself and Christine. Um, you and mean then for today? I, for today. Mm-hmm. And then session two, we had 24, I think it was about 20. Yeah. It was, it was about 20. Yeah. Yeah, I think we had a good for both. And people kind of came in and came out, but mm -hmm. I'd say that that that's that that's kind of a ballpark of what we would expect if we were in person. Okay. It, I just didn't know like normally, yeah. I mean this format is new, yeah. I mean, not just technology per se, but um, I didn't know if like the percentage of who signed up versus who actually showed up 
you know, is that is that something normal you all see? Like, oh, we usually only get about 75%. I'm not looking for an exact percentage or anything. I'm not mm -hmm. putting it in my diary. I'm just like wondering if, yeah. uh, you know, if there's kind of, you know, there's going to be a dip of, hey, people aren't going to show up even though they sign up. I mean, I know stuff happens. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, it varies per community. So no, no community is the same. I mean, we've had some communities that have had a lot sign up and then there's a smaller number in um, the evening. Now this is my first one in this virtual um, platform. Um, so to me, I thought this was great with the folks that signed up and who attend for both sessions. You have really good numbers. I, I think you should commend, be commended. I, yeah, totally. And Nick, to be honest, like I checked off the people, you know, I didn't include anybody from the federal state partners, the technical assistance team who registered to the people who RSVP'd who didn't show up. But again, that could mean that they've RSVP'd for tomorrow and not for today. That could mm -hmm. be a difference. Alyssa Redman, um, Holly Hutchins. Uh, Haley Eirich is part of the DEQ, so she's kind of one of the federal state partners. Hope Alfin, um, Judy Klesman, Mark Lewis, Megan Schmidt, Samantha Haspel, Thomas McClinton, Virginia Brown. Some of those people um, will most like will possibly attend um, tomorrow. Um, I know one of them; she probably has something to come up with her with her kids. Yeah. Um, and then with one of the gentlemen, um, there's some big projects going on for him. And um, he's a part of our committee as well. So um, I know he's kind of tied up in a lot of, a lot of things um, right now since some things are opened up or since things are opened up due to COVID or. From, from my perspective, just briefly, you've had tremendous turnout, I think. You have people who have shown up who are knowledgeable, who are passionate, who can speak to things on the ground. You know, you have people who are not just like maybe interested. They are really knowledgeable and can speak to things and say, oh, well, we can reach out to that person. So both, you know, from the time we got the registration form up to the number of people who RSVP to the number of people showed up. I mean, I would say like if I had four thumbs, I would give you four thumbs up. Really great work, I think, across yeah, the board. Yeah. I second that. Oh, I just want to make sure we're making the best. I mean, obviously we applied for this and you guys mm -hmm. know this is the work you all do, but I, I want to make sure it's worthwhile for all involved, not just our community, but for you guys put a lot of work into this. And um, yeah. I was happy, like I said, when I, I was sincere, oh, yeah. when I did the welcome, that I was happy to see all the, the faces. Yeah. So. I, I think one thing that steering committees, they, 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 they seem to ask the question a lot of, you know, is this enough people? Did we get enough people? Um, I mean, it, it's more about do we have the right people in the room? Right. And um, the one, the LFLP I did, it was in Duluth. The one that that did not go as well, that went least well, was the one that had the most people in it. Mm. And and I thought I thought this one went as well as any I've been a part of yeah. for for the day one. I mean, I thought it went really well. So awesome conversation. The chat is just loaded. I've got 12 pages of notes, single spaced, um, from just things that people were saying. And, uh, you know, so I, I thought it was great. Yeah. And I, I, I really like how we went through the actions together and talked through them. Because with one of them we've done, we didn't really do that when we went on to groups. We were all kind of trying to figure it out together. And I, I think that's going to, that's going to, bear fruit tomorrow the way it was set up and last thing really last thing yeah uh i see you an email christine but um judy klusman who you mentioned who didn't come she's a county commissioner um she, i would guess she might come tomorrow she did ask about um coming to the post workshop committee meetings mm -hmm. oh good if anybody else asks that, I know we don't want the committee to grow too big. Is that something we want to consider? Because I could see uh, the city of Fish, uh, we see the city being a partner in this, but we also see someone in assisting us kind of um, lead this moving forward within the community as well. So we're looking for all volunteers, um, you know. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, that's, that's 
We actually encourage. Okay. <laughs> yeah, those who participate because that brings more hands to the table to help carry out those actions for you. Right. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I didn't want to overpromise people and then you say, no, 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 we don't want that many more people to the steering committee, but like with the post work, I want to, she was, she's definitely interested. So I said, let me double check. Um, but, okay. So, you know, the, the calendar invite should be set up so that anyone can invite anybody else. And Will, okay. would you mind double checking that please? Um, like that the calls four, five, and six are set up so that anybody else can invite. But Nick, I just popped them in the um, chat yeah. roll. We'll mention them tomorrow. Anybody on the workshop is welcome to join those. And you know, we it will really be even more this year with the virtual space, an extension of this conversation. Because we wanna make sure, you know, if someone needs to reach out to somebody else and they haven't had a chance to, we wanna make sure that an action can get teased out and teased out and teased out. That was awesome, Latoya. <laughs> you, you got your background image and then came forward. That was so oh, cool. It's a long day. It's been a long day. <laughs> that was oh. awesome. <laughs> that was I like, I'll give you a little laugh before you go to bed. It's <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, awesome. Thanks Latoya, again. Any feedback? Yeah, for sure.